Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Merriam. And I'm Wizard Ballmeister. And we've got Robin Booth say that's a stupid name, Corey, Rob. That's a stupid name, Corey, Rob. <laughs> hey! Rob will be um, taking all of your questions, comments, sure. concerns, and burns, much like the one I just gave him <laughs> in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to <laughs> us. You better be careful. I'm a wizard. I might know some burn spells, you know? Yeah, I feel like any spell you tried to cast would just backfire and hit you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it would two for one me if I try to cast a spell? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Casting okay. spells requires saying very specific words and enunciating them very clearly. Uh, like cold ham. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that. I, that's not among your skills. <laughs> I would truly blow up buildings or something yeah. if I was in a Harry you Potter should, school or you something. You should stay away from any sort of witchcraft or wizardry. That's true. That's true. But if, it, if it's handwritten, you know, spells or something, look out. Look out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I am. I'm going to stay very far away. Um, I, I so, don't want to be around when the destruction and havoc is unleashed. That's fair. That's as, fair. As Deus would like to tell you, Cory Potter was right there. Cory Potter? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> it was right there. Right there. I, I, I threw it away. I threw it away. It's okay. What? We're only trying to think of names for him for two hours before the Just show. two hours. We came in early and everything, and we came up with Wizard Ballmeister. So <laughs> thank you very much. Now, you might be wondering why I'm wearing this ridiculous hat. And that's because Ross won Strixhaven preview season because he's a jerk. And oh, that's it. Just another day at the office. Just another day at the office. So you will be able to collect this trinket over there. Oh, yep. But you know what? Joke's on you. I think it's pretty fashionable. So Stretch after a job well done. <laughs> oh, but you wore the Mana Flood shirt. You know you're, you know you're screwed now, right? Yeah, I decided to tempt fate today. Mm, you know, mm. I've already locked up the, the wizard hat, so... It's kind of playing with house money on today. Yeah. So. Okay, good. Well, I hope that just means now it's time for me to get back to doing what I do best, beating you, because it hasn't happened in, in a very long time. So I need he's, to... He's uh, not wrong. Yeah. So we're going to be playing some standard today uh, with anticipation for the SCG tour that will be this weekend. Um, just trying to give you all some ideas, trying to look at some cool things that we've been seeing as far as like standard challenges and stuff. There hasn't been any huge event yet. So yeah. this is going to be the first test. Um, but we did have some cool decks. You know, we got some user submitted, uh, some, some, some of y'all submissions. Um, for at least my first one. I think your first one as well, right? Uh, my third one. Third one. Okay, cool, cool. So, and then we just picked out some decks that actually look good, um, you know, to take into these turns. We've kind of abandoned trying these new cards out that we kind of know weren't going to be good, but we want to see how they work. Now we're really just putting these cards into good shells and trying to figure it out. Yeah, and so what are you going to be starting with? I'm going to be starting with a red-white kind of Goldspan Dragon Unleash Fury deck. We've seen iterations of this before, but now we get the Luminance, Lum, Luminancer? Clever Lumamancer. Yeah, yeah, and then we, you know, just some of these Magecraft cards. Um, you know, one one of these days I will be getting these cards down. Um, and well, the 2-3 bird. is a bit of a, a tongue twister. It really is. Then we got that 2-3 bird that you can return stuff. Lavinda, student's advocate. Oh, what would I do without you? What would I do without you? You also of Lean and Light Scribe. Yes, that's <laughs> the one I knew and I was going to say next, so. <laughs> but we're just going to be trying to bump, you know, just boost up our creatures and get you dead pretty quickly. Yeah, sort of a, a heroic style deck, but yep. with Goldspan Dragon at the top end of the curve, which is a really good idea. You know, Goldspan Dragon works yeah. really well with cheap spells that can target it, so you keep getting more yeah. treasures and you can cast, you know, three or four additional spells. And this was just Naya before, but now we can just go red-white because we have some extra threats. It doesn't have to be the adventure package, yeah. although maybe it's just better because the adventure package, the, but we'll find out. creatures certainly work really well. Mavinda yep. obviously synergizes well with the deck's plan, so mm -hmm. all the threats make a lot of sense. Yeah, it should be fun. What do you got up against me? I've got a deck list that comes courtesy of Yeoman 5, mm. and it is a cool little Golgari Pests combo deck. I know you've been very impressed with 10 the Pests yeah. with Croxa making 6 Pests, but I figured if you make 6, that's worse than making 11. I did the math. Yep. Yeah, I'll give Corey a little a second. Pi divided normally by... You're wizards, right. Normally wizards are good at math, but I guess Corey <laughs> missed that. Uh, so we've got, you know, uh, the 4 mana 11, 10, Damagoth mm -hmm. Titan. We're going to sacrifice that one and make 11 pest tokens, but there's a bit of a combo in here. We can play Rushed Rebirth first, okay. then sacrifice it. The Rushed Rebirth allows us to then find a creature with lower mana value, uh, and we're going to find our one copy of Ayara, that's going to enter the battlefield before the 10 the pest resolves because sacrificing is an additional cost. Then you're going to get your 11 pests and trigger it 11 more times. Wow. 
So that's pretty disgusting. Yeah, I got a cool little combo, but otherwise just sort of a Golgari mid-range deck. We've got some Blexes to pump our pests. Okay. Uh, and uh, we've got a little bit of a learn package as well. Okay. Sounds pretty sweet. Sounds like a sweet deck. All right. So you naturally did win to lock it up last show. Yeah. So I will be going first. I, I had Rob nail those down because I didn't think they were going to move. Yeah, I might was, as well. I was worried about earthquakes. <laughs> okay. Very, very prevalent in the Roanoke region. Yeah. 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 yeah it's very common. All right. I can uh, play a uh, Fury Calm Snarl untapped. So this hand's unbeatable. Uh. You know, I was excited when I saw the first three cards were the combo, <laughs> but the sand only has one land, so... Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. Okay. Rob, you got any questions maybe about my fashionable wizard hat? Where you can buy these and et cetera? Uh, Estea says, Corey's casting stat is charisma. He's clearly a sorcerer, not a wizard. <laughs> yes. There we go. There we go. I like that. My charisma is through the roof. So. Also, Lord Vell said if what Corey does best is beating Ross, he might need to reevaluate his life. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> we did ask for burns, so yeah. <laughs> Harsh. Ban them. Ban them right oh, now. Getting, getting I, might, I might give him a VIP badge for that. All I don't right, know. All right. Yeah, I got to give him some. I got to cool down after that one. <laughs> so mean. So mean. <laughs> Fan yourself down. <laughs> Harsh, 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 but, but fair. fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not wrong. Not wrong, not wrong. All right. Let's see if I can get a hand with some lands here. Oh, I hope you don't. So I can cast some spells. I just hope today, now that now that you've won, the pressure's off. Now I just get to get to do a, a good gentleman sweep, you know? A good wizardly sweep. Um yeah, this seems like an easy keep to me. Okay. Um, and this seems like the card we've got to put back, unfortunately. Okay. Just to make sure we hit some lands. So, yeah. All right, I got a Snarl, I got a Mountain, and I got a Clever Luminancer. Okay, I will play a Tangled Veil and oh, pass okay. the turn. Okay. Ooh, it's an interesting draw. Well, let's start with this. I got a Defiant Strike. Yep. Draw. Now we got a 3-3. Three, three. Ooh, that was a pretty interesting draw. All right, I will put a counter on it. So now you've got a 6-6. Six, six. Yep, yep. You do learn as well. What do we want to get? Um... Let's just go with uh, just a little pump package for next turn, and I'll attack for six. I'm at 14. All right, here go. Not bad, not bad turn two. Especially because it didn't cost you a card. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. That was kind of sweet. Uh, play Dark Four Pathway. Okay. And I'm going to play Hunt for Specimens. Okay. I'm wondering if I just want to uh, rummage here instead of getting a card. I'm light on lands. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for it. I don't feel good about huh. it. I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> that learn ability, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I will discard Plum the Forbidden. Okay. And pass the turn. All right. Not the draw we wanted, but I think our turn's pretty easy here. I'm gonna go like this and attack for uh, five with Vigilant. Yeah, I'll chump with the pest. Okay, you go to 15? One. Yeah, again, one to 15. Pass to you. Okay, I'll hit the land just in time, <coughs> though it's not a great one. I'll take three from Magadine. Okay. 12. And play a Sedgemore Witch. Okay. Pass the turn. The Witch. No! Why can't we hit our land on time? You did hit land three on time. <laughs> yeah, but I want land four. All right. Um, all right. I'll just attack. I'll take three. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> Pump it. Plus three. Plus five. <laughs> and okay. double it. 
good. I was like, oh, I didn't hit the land, but I that was a card that kills you. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, I did draw a gold spawn dragon, but okay. Potentially chump blocked a turn early. Yeah. If I had taken the six, I wouldn't have gained the life. I would have been at five, and you'd have had a three power thing. I, I chumped uh, that turn. You just do nothing. I wasn't going to hit the land, but I was going to be able to uh, start making tokens from then on out. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. It's pretty crazy how fast that Luminancer can actually kill. That's That surprised me. That surprised me. Adding some tokens on there and then unleash fury yeah. is just uh, pretty insane. And it wasn't just uh, it, was, it wasn't even a difference of me having drawn the agony. If, if I'm still at 15, I'm still dead there, right? Yeah, because it was three, it four, five, six, one, seven, eight, then 16. sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Impressive stuff. Not bad. Not bad. All right, let's head to game two. Now you're on the play. It's going to be a little bit of a different story. Rob, you got a question at all? Please no more wizard burns. I can't handle no. it. No. Okay, good, uh, good, good. Crocodile wants to know, what do Corianos think of including one environmental science in your sideboard learn packages? Is just the two mana get a land like too slow for the time you actually need it? I actually I actually like that. Uh, I, I think that would be a good addition because right there, that's that's what I would have loved to do. Uh, it's just what? It's two mana, get a land. Gain two life. And gain two. And yeah, I, I actually think that's good because it triggers the magecraft and stuff too. Um, that should probably be in there. Yep. Nice find. Also, Hestaeus uh, wants to know, do you I think... I can't the... stand another Hestaeus No, 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 no. This is a good one. This is a good one. Okay, okay. Uh, does the Bora... Do you feel like the Boros deck has to mulligan to Luminomancer or Light Scribe? <sighs> it kind of seems like it. Uh, on the play with a, like a showdown hand, it's possible, but it, it does seem like you need one of those cards. Yeah, because it's and it, it's because you don't really interact. Yeah. Right? If you had some, if you were able to, you know, play some inter interactive spells into Mavinda or into Goldspan Dragon, uh -huh. that would be reasonable. But if you're just doing nothing, but yeah. like you know, casting Defiant Strike on your opponent's creatures on their end step, to yeah. Cantrip, yeah, you're just going to fall too far behind. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, Light Scribe seems a lot worse than Luminancer, to be fair. Yeah, I think a Light Scribe really wants to be played with Clarion Spirit. Yeah, yep, I totally agree. And this hand has no lands, so... This hand is a pretty land-heavy hand for this deck, but, you know, we have a lot of showdowns, we have a lot of gold spans, it's good draws, so I think I'm going to keep this. This is definitely on the low end of keeps on the draw, even for me. But I, I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, Standard looks to be in an interesting spot. I think Historic got a huge shakeup. And Standard got a lot of, like, upgrades. As well as some other cool stuff has been popping up. And I know for these SCG satellites, at least... These first ones are going to be really fun because people are going to be trying their new brews and stuff. And then I imagine once we get to the Sunday Strixhaven Championship Qualifier, it's going to be the Solta. It's going to be the Rogues. You know, it's going to be these really good decks. Yeah, how defined do you expect the metagame to be by the end of the weekend? Yeah, I, I think it will be a situation where it's going to revert back to what it is. Strixhaven just doesn't have the cards that are that impactful outside of Mystical Archive. Um, but I, I'm hoping I'm wrong. And we're only five days in or whatever, so there easily could be new decks and things that aren't completely explored yet. But I'm just barely optimistic about that. I think it's going to be a situation where you see a lot of the old decks, but then we see the, the few new decks that are able to break through. Yep. And then the question will be how the metagame reacts to those new players. Agreed, agreed. Okay, this six is keepable. We'll definitely put the IR on the bottom. We want that in our deck. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, and I'll lead on a Fable Passage. All right. Uh, I got a Snarl tapped, and I'll pass to you. I will get a Swamp. Yeah, not the draw we wanted there, but, you know, we still got we still got some time to get one of our powerful spells. Do you, though? Yeah, maybe. Unless you're dropping 11 tens anytime soon. Let's play Slitherbore Pathway and Dinah. Someone's okay. in the kitchen. <laughs> Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. Past you. Uh, Valentine. Okay. Resolves me. And I will attack for one. I will take it. You go to 19. 19. Pass the turn. 
Okay, that was a decent draw. Um, let me take a peek. Ooh, I forgot to check out my, or I forgot to get my card out. Let me grab that real quick. God, this stuff would happen so often, I feel, in real tournaments. Like, I wonder what the fix is. Like, if I have a, an illegal sideboard, right? All right. So, I am going to... I'm going to go with the Guiding Voice. What are we learning? I think I want to... I want to loot here. Oh, rummage, not loot. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna discard this card and draw. Looks like Corey's a little flooded, which makes it weird that they put the snarl on tap. I guess he just didn't have anything to do. Yeah, I just didn't have anything. Throw me off the scent. I didn't want to. I didn't want to flex on you too hard. So I'll attack for four. It's a four point attack. Okay, I'll take this. Defiant strike to make it six. Yep. And then Defiant Strike to make it 8. Yeah, I'll be at 12. Okay, I'll pass to you. On your end step, I'm just going to cast up on the Forbidden, go to 11. Okay. Little cycle. Thought about blocking with Valentin and getting an extra card out of it, but I think a little bit of life gain here, and it's actually attacking for 2 because of the Dyna. Yep. Yeah, that seems good. Somewhat valuable. Um, That's a bit of a tilt. So, I will attack for two. Okay, I'll take it. Dino will trigger when I gain life. So, you're going to take three, and I'll gain one. 16 to Two. 12. Then, I will play Hunt for Specimens. Okay. What kind of specimens are you hunting for? Could get pest summoning just to keep chump blocking. I could also get necrotic fumes and try to deal with this light scribe. Okay. I think I'd rather just get a pest summoning though. You are pretty pesty. And so pass the turn. You're quite the pest, I must agree. Um. Let me take a peek at my sideboard for no reason. Um, my lessons are not very good. All right. I am going to go with a guiding voice. Yep. I'm going to rummage. Draw. Um, then I'm going to play a land and I'll attack. Yeah, I'll block with the pass. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to gain a life when it dies and you'll lose a life. Yep, so you go to 13, I go to 15. Yep. And I'll pass to you. I'll attack for two. Okay, I will go to 12, and you'll go to 14. Yep. Okay, you're winning. I'll play Pest Summoning. Okay. And get two pests. Then I'll play a Temple of Malice and Scry. Okay. That's a good draw. Um... Hmm. That's an interesting one. Interesting. Kind of like it. Okay. A little awkward on the mana, but I like it. I'll leave it on top. A little awkward on the mana. Okay. Don't think I have a very good attack with this. You know, you just chumping here is kind of not good. So I'll just attack with Goldspan Dragon. You got a 10. Pass you. You have three in hand? Three in hand, yep. I will attack with just the Valentin. I will take it, so I'll go to 10 and you go to 11? Yep. Okay. Three in hand. Three in hand. A little 
worried about this gold span dragon killing me next turn. It's a fair fair worry. Wondering what I can do about it. Hopefully nothing. All I can do there. Yeah, I'll play Sedge more Witch. Okay. Pass the turn. Who? Um. I got a couple more of these. <laughs> um. Two cards in hand. Two cards. Um. All right, I'll just attack with Gold Span Dragon. No blocks. Okay, yeah, take four. I go to seven. Seven to ten, and I'll pass to you. You're at ten right now. I'm at ten, yep. I'm afraid of you killing me. <laughs> hmm. So, no. Doing some math here. Um, Mathematics. Trying to figure out if I can make attacks before trying to go in for the kill. I don't like that. I think if I attacked with everything, Corey would probably go block, block, and block there, and take three. Um... But I want to keep these two around. That wouldn't be a good attack then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm just going to send in with the Valentin and the two pests. Okay. Um, One of them has to get through. Hmm. Let's go with, yeah, they kind of deal damage regardless here, so let's block like that. Okay, for four damage, I will cast Plum the Forbidden, Sacrificing Valentin, and one Pest to create two copies. So uh, I'm going to create two copies, gain a life off the Pest, you lose a life. Where do these stack? Hmm? Where do these stack? They uh... the pest. It's yeah, an, it's that goes cost, on, so top on top of the plums, right? Of the plum. yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's resolve this first. So you're going to go to nine. I'll go to eight. Yep. Then I have three triggers of Sedgemore Witch. Yep. So that's three pests. Then I have three copies of Plum the Forbidden. So I'm going to lose three. Go to five. Okay. And draw three. Okay. Then we will go to combat damage. You take one. Yep. Down to eight. Yeah, and I think I am a little short. Yay! Yeah, I'll 
I've got another plum the forbidden, but I only have the four pests to sacrifice. Yep. Uh, play a land. And I guess I will pass the turn. All right. Um... I will hmm. I'll attack with everything. I'll put one pest in front of each of the light scribes. Okay, I get a treasure. Damage. Um Yeah, so I'm going to go to one. Yep. Then these will die. With all those triggers on the stack, I'll sack and fling this to you. So take four. These don't trigger. Correct. Because it's a, yeah, it's because an additional it's an additional cost. cost. So yeah, just four to you. But I think that should do it. Depending on what you got. Um... Yeah, that'll do it. All right. Yeah, GG. Rushed Rebirth, it didn't really do much of anything. Yeah. I, I was just trying to find some spell to kill you that turn before. I I only needed, like, a Defiance Strike. Yeah, yeah. yeah but... Uh, so you just didn't have a spell? I just didn't have a spell. I only had wow. the Fury. And, you know, I, I rummaged quite a bit. And I, I did keep a land heavy hand. But, uh, yeah, I couldn't find a spell there at the end. But still was enough to get through. Yeah. If you, if you drew a land there, I think you're dead. Well, I had the Fury. I had the Fury for a long time, oh. but I'm saying if I had oh, the Defiant Strike sure. the previous turn, okay. but yeah, I was just short of doing something with the Fury the turn before, yeah, yeah. but yeah, wasn't able to do it. So, all right, that's going to do it for our first two games. Boros taking it down. So we're going to head to the sideboard here and see what we got uh, for the rest of round one. Don't go anywhere. Well, welcome back to Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our matchup between Golgari Pest Combo and Boros Heroic. On my side of things, definitely in need of some interaction here. So we've got five different removal spells to bring in. A couple of like cheap or some of the cheap. Heartless Act is a nice instant speed removal spell, especially against Goldspan Dragon. And then one Pelucranos, which we can potentially find off of a rushed rebirth. Now, mm -hmm. I don't have five drops in my deck, but should I rushed rebirth one of Corey's <laughs> Goldspan Dragons and Heartless Act it? then I believe I get to search for a four drop. I just can't wait until you do that. Give me a treasure, and then I fight as one. <laughs> and, and then I, you'd probably still get the creature, right? Even if it doesn't mm -hmm. die? Or no, it says when die. that creature dies, it's starting to search So for probably not. Yes, I, I would get enough. <laughs> yeah, so it's a risky me, play. It's a risky line, but you know, you, sometimes somebody's you have got, to do it. Somebody's got to make it. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. So from my end, I'm doing the same. Just bringing in some removal. Um, deal with Sedgemore Witch. Deal with uh, Dinah. I'm taking out a couple of our creatures, which seems a little wrong and it really could be but this creature does seem a little weak in the deck um just because you're not pumping a wide array of creatures the 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 mancer plus you know goldspan dragon that's how i kill people you know yeah. uh this card is like the the gold the bronze medal um and then we're gonna just take out one guiding voice but this might be wrong to take out any creatures since we have so little of creatures but we'll find out we will indeed we will we will. Yeah, I wonder what other kind of creatures it can be, like with Magecraft. I, I just, or you just play Clarion Spirit, add yeah. that into there. I think that would be fine. So a cou couple Spirit's of questions, actually, for you yeah, about the Boros deck. Uh, first up, Estatus want to know, what do you think about fitting some Bone Crusher Giants into it? And also, did you have a plan for opposing Bone Crusher Giants? Oh, a lot of crying. You know, they have Bone Crusher. I mean, Defiant Strike on these Magecraft cards is still pretty good, right? If on turn two I go... Um, the Luminan Luminancer, and then just have any pump spell. It's a tough thing to stomp. Um, and having Bone Crusher Giant in here seems decent. It is the double spell thing, but I do think you want to stay a little bit lower to the ground, would be my guess. 
Um, so I'm more interested in Clarion Spirit. And then we have, what, 16 or 20 creatures? 16. I think 16 is a good amount for this. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. It could easily just be a great sideboard card, too. Agreed. You know, and then, I like that card on the sideboard. Actually, yeah, leading into the sideboard, uh -huh. um, Mitch Erdson, I had a question for Corey. When putting the deck together, I wasn't entirely sure what sure entirely sure on the sideboard what changes might you make to fix it up i'd want to put that lesson in there that finds a land i think that's sweet and i think um i want bone crusher giant as some better removal i don't think rip apart is going to actually be that good or it's going to be that different right like it, it's it's interesting that it can kill great henge and stuff but i think it would be better as bone crusher i also don't see a real need for soul guide lantern against these crocs decks you just don't care you just kill them you know? Yeah, and against, like, rogues, I'd rather see something like uh, the Phoenix as an escape. Yeah, or Oxes, yeah. you know? Like, yeah, so I think uh, I think I would cut those. Dranus Magistrate is interesting against adventure cards. I, I, I've never loved that card, because it also hits our own... Oh, your opponents. Okay. It doesn't hit our own showdown, but... Yeah. yeah. My, my big thing is that because this deck wants to have a good amount of hub spells and threats, mm -hmm. having your removal play double duty as one of those things yeah. is important. So I'd want the sideboard removal to come in the form of other creatures, Bone Agreed. Crusher Giant, Skyclave Apparition, even yeah. Giant Killer, uh, yeah. you know, so that you have other targets for your pump spells when you need them. The mm -hmm. creatures getting pumped by Lean and Light Scribe. Yeah. Uh, and you, you get to keep developing those synergies. Yeah, I totally agree. And Clarion Spirit in the main seems like a kind of a slam dunk here, too. And then we just have a good aggressive Boros deck. And you know what? Maybe we'll get a little crazy, too. Add, add 20 cards. Let's let's turn this into a Boros Yorian deck now, and then we're no. really cooking. <laughs> All right, fine. Fine. Some things were never actually meant to be, Corey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose. But Showdown, Yorian, y'all ever tried? I will keep my hand here. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I can keep as well. Play Temple of Malady. Okay. And, yeah, that one's going to stay on top. Okay. I will draw. I think I just want to make sure I hit my land drops. Oh, the top deck nut. It's interesting. Um... Might get punished on this, though. Yeah, I'm just going to take the conservative play and play this Sejiri Glacier Pass to you. Okay, I've got a Slitherwar Pathway and a Hunt for Specimens. Okay. And I will find a Pest Summoning. Pass the turn. Such a pest. Such a pest. I got this. I got this. I got this. And I'll pass to you. I'm pretty happy with my turn one play for the land with what we just drew there. Not bad. Not bad. Hmm. Mm, yes. I'll take three, play pass summoning. Okay. You're at 17? Pass the turn. You don't want to attack? Nope. Okay. Um... All right. I have another one. And... And I'll attack. No block. Take two. Play 15. Here we go. A swamp here. Swamp. Um. Decisions, decisions. Five cards in hand. Five cards. Let me go for the blacks. Okay. Hunt my team. Sure. I want to attack in. Corey's probably got some sort of spell. I suspect a protection spell. I would just trade with a pest, though. Yeah, I'll get in for six. In for six, eh? Um. Yeah, I'll block. 
I gotta fight as one. So I'll put a counter on this. Uh, where are you getting counters? <clears throat> <laughs> so yeah, I guess take, that's worse, but whatever. You take four, I gain one. Sixteen. So Sixteen. And you go, yeah, sixteen all. That's the turn. Okay. I got a land. And uh, I got an attack. No block. Take it. Ooh, I like that. I'm not dead. <laughs> I'm a 12. I got a showdown. Sure. Exile four. All right. I'll pass to you. This deck's kind of gas. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't lie to you. We've proven that multiple times over the show. Yeah, yeah. We are completely honest with each other and so nice and encouraging, just like when we're playing basketball or tennis. Just always cheering each other on, just saying, good shot, buddy, and keep it up. Try hard, you know? You can do anything after, you put your mind after to. After every air bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, they don't need to know that. <laughs> I have the video evidence on Twitter. Ah, oh, dang it. You're right. Yeah, that was Ross. Although, to be fair, Ross, Ross came out looking pretty good in that one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Ugh. Tricky one for you, huh? Yeah, I'm so close to doing good things, but instead I'm not. Oh, okay, okay. You should probably get a little closer, then. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what exactly I can do here. <laughs> and it's really not looking good um well i'm definitely want to start with heartless acting one of the light scribes okay and at that point i think we can just get in for seven okay so attack you for seven bring you to nine nine and then i will pass the turn hmm hmm i will draw a chapter two. Um, let's go with this. Then I got a gold span dragon. Put a counter here. Yep. Uh, declare tax? Yep. All right, so you don't have a heartless act. <laughs> I think you would have did that now. Talk like this. Yeah, no blocks. Unleash Fury on this. Um, so I can put a counter somewhere. I can turn this into 10 power. I wonder if I can put a counter here instead. Yeah, I'm gonna put a counter here. Trigger Magecraft, then double. So this is going to be so 10, 10. And this is a 5. That's 15. And I get a treasure. 15's a lot. Yeah. So I will cast 10 the pass on Blex. Okay. And gain 4 when it dies. Okay. That'll put me to 16. Got another spell? Yeah, wait a minute. Um, 5, 10... 15. I don't. I guess I screwed that up. Okay, so I'm going to end at 1. Okay. Um, I think you're safe. <laughs> then I will... I will sack this for 2 white. Play Luminancer. Put a counter... Here and then play guided voice, put two counters here, and I will I'll rummage and I'll pass to you. Well, okay. I feel like I screwed that up. I probably could have killed you. Yeah, if you just put the counter on the dragon. Yep, 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 yep. So yeah, that would have been uh, 6, then 12, um, 16 exactly. 
Every time I draw Plum the Forbidden, I think it's Hunt for Specimens. Yeah, and, they do look very yeah. similar. Yeah. And Hunt for Specimens would have actually been good. Yeah. Would I have died? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I, I would have survived by dealing with the dragon. Oh, fair, fair, fair. So I would have gotten necrotic fumes. Yep. But instead, I drew Plum the Forbidden when I'm at one. It's <laughs> not great. Well, you can still gain live, right? But it, it, there's always the original copy. Ah, uh, makes sense, makes sense. So, yeah, can't really cast this card at one life, even with infinite pests. <laughs> um, and I guess I can... Yeah, okay, so that's what I have to do. So... I will... Attack with three of the pests. Yeah, I'll take it. You got a six? Yep. Fish. <laughs> I'll tend the, I was just going to tend the pest, the one you blocked. Uh, so that'll have me gain a life. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, and then I get a pest. Yep. I was just like, if it died, or if no creatures of yours die, you couldn't cast plum, but that makes sense. Yeah. So, so you got a two. Um, yeah, it's probably right for you not to block. Yeah. <laughs> Still fish. <laughs> and now I need to plumb, and I need to hit land and heartless act in the top few cards of my deck. Yep. So I think I got to give myself the best chance of doing that, which means sacrificing. So I should have attacked with one more plant even. Yeah. Um, so I'll sack three. Going for the one outer, but also need the land? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So, yeah, because you need two blockers as well. Yeah. So this will leave me at one, and I'll draw four cards. Okay. Love it. Love it. Got to play to your outs, boys and girls. Bang! Oh, yeah, you're such the, a the land's not even going to be there. Oh, yeah, I hope so. Oh, we hit it. Wow, <laughs> he's the luckiest human being on the face and of the earth. Do you have the protected spell? <laughs> no, I don't, but that would have been salty red. Yeah. <laughs> salty or, red. Or, the, or removal spell at this point. Yeah, I don't and, yet. <laughs> All right, draw chapter three. Um... Oh no! I legitimately have you dead if I didn't top deck a stupid snarl. Stupid, stupid snarl. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, you're done. Um, I got this thing. Pay zero for the voice, and then get so pay zero. Well, you got to still pay the spell, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. cast, okay. and then academic probation. I target that. Yeah, that'll play. <laughs> so close, so close. And the, the Mavinda just as a flyer would have been good too. Yeah, yeah, Mavinda's pretty good, but Stupid Snarl was my top deck. Yeah. But I, was, yeah. I, I thought I needed three lands, but that removal spell gives you a creature anyway, so I was just totally looking at the wrong thing anyways. Yeah. But I was talking to Corey before the show saying how I wanted Love Struck Beast in this deck. <laughs> it's another card to go with Ten the Pass. And that game, like I had Rush Rebirth double Ten the Pass, but I just had nothing yeah. good to sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, the Blex is what I wanted to keep around and then make tokens with something else. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, though, you're battling against a true wizard right now. So it's it's going to take more than a Love Struck Beast. You're going to you're going to need more than just your heart's desire to beat a, a trained wizard here. So Trained and, you know. <laughs> Quotes. If you can't tell, I'm grinning from cheek to cheek at my bad jokes all show. If I have to wear the hat, I might as well have fun with it, right? <laughs> all right, we got time for one pity game here. Rob, you got a question for us in the meantime? <laughs> all right, no. All right, empty queue if you want to I will say, ask us anything. Lord Vell did say that they were jealous of Rosh's basketball shoes. Yeah, your shoes are nice. Yeah. You got those Crayola Don yeah. issue they twos. They told me that those shoes were hideous when I bought them. Yo, I didn't say that. They're all wrong. <laughs> I just said I like the red or the blue better. That's all. <laughs> to be fair, my... It was, it was Tana that told me they were hideous. Yeah, to be fair, my default is to insult you and then actually think about things later. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. like... <laughs> the, the yellow Crayola colorway is nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see if you can do your thing or if this uh, Boros deck is just yeah. kind of the real deal. What I need to do is draw Damagoth Titan. That's the card that pulls everything yeah. together, and I've yet to draw it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That on turn four there, if you cast that, I was terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will keep my hand, though. I'm going to mulligan mine, just a 0-1 lander. If I had another lander, it would be pretty close, but... A mulligan. I assume we got a mulligan pretty aggressively with this deck, and also it's a deck that probably wouldn't mulligan very well. 
You know, like that's that's the problem. It's like there's a decent amount of can trips, but you still need to hit land four. You need to hit land five or showdown. Showdown's like the card here. We saw how fast the game changes when you have a showdown's chapter two. Okay, I'll keep. Um, let's get rid of the Sajiri shelter and let's do it. I'll lead on a swamp. Schmamp. Okay, I have a clever Luminancer. Okay, I will Heartless Act it. How dare you. Pass the turn. How dare you. Um, all right, I just have a land pass. I like that. Yeah, kind of happens with this deck if you lose your creature, it's not Blade great. More witch. <laughs> all right, I'll rip that apart. That's a sorcery. <clears throat> Okay, well, just kidding. I wanted to play this other land then. I was just holding that up for that. That was my yeah. only point. <laughs> okay, well, now end step. Um, if you want to cycle a Defiant Cycle, it'll cost you through life. I know. I know. I know. Uh, but I will. Ouch, lightning bolt myself. You're at 17. 17, draw. I need a threat or I need some some other action. Neither of which I have found, and now I'll rip that apart. Take another three, please. <laughs> Here are 14. All right, pass to you. We're in trouble. Uh, I will play Damagoth Titan. Okay. Pass the turn. Stupid. Well, we're in a lot of trouble now. All right, well, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, and this is not great, but I am going to put a 1-1 counter on it, and then get it out of there. <laughs> you get a 3-2. There you go, and I'll pass to you. Let's play Fable Passage and sack it. Okay. Get a forest. Play another Sedgemore Witch and uh, attack for three. Okay, I'm at 11. Pass the turn. And very dead if we don't get a showdown or... Oh, no! No! Oh, that was such a tilt. Okay, well, I will play this land tapped and I will pass to you. Dang it. Guess what he drew. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, so attack for six. Okay, take it. Easy to five. Yep. I'll just cast up on the forbidden normally. Get okay. a pest. Draw a card. Sure. So draw two. At, uh, no, oh, just normally. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. 19. Okay. And I'll pass the turn. All right. I think I'm just dead no matter what now. Four, I guess I can live. I got a gold span dragon in defense, and I'll pass to you. Uh, play Temple of Melody. Okay. Scry. We can scry that to the bottom. Okay. And send in the clowns. I'll block this clown. I'll play Plum the Forbidden. Uh, let's sacrifice both of these. Kay. So I'm going to gain one, lose three. So down two. Put sure. me to 17. 17. Get yep. two more, pe or three pests. Three pests, yep. And draw three. Yep. And then I'll take three down to two. Uh, so yeah, puts you to two. Um... Oh, hang on, I gotta take this. It's my good friend spam risk, so. <laughs> you have three, two. two in hand? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rush three, Rush your gold fan dragon. <laughs> I'll get a treasure. Yeah. Heartless actor gold fan dragon. And I'll fight as one and protect it. I'll get, oh, I got three treasures. Yeah, I had the fight as one, but yeah. it's going to be difficult for Corey to kill me here. All right, I think we need a showdown. This is step one. <laughs> All right. Show me the down. 
Mm. That's probably not going to do it. Yeah, I can deal you 12, which is impressive. <laughs> oh, that'll do it. Yeah, I just have this pump, and I'm dead. Yep. I had to yep. play the the pathway on white to be able to do the the guiding voice reduced to memory plan and then immediately drew gold fan dragon when I only had one red. I'm like, dang it. Ooh, would that have done it? Eight, take eight. Oh, one card away. Oh, 16. I would have been one chart. Um, right. So you drew the light scribe. So you're I drew this, so it wouldn't have step. been this. So it would have been take eight and then throw eight at you, but you were at 17. Yeah. That would have been a tilt. All right, all right. I guess we had to l let you have one. Yeah, I mean, that, let you that have instability one. is pretty typical of heroic decks. So yep. you, you keep those one creature hands all the time, and then when your opponent kills them and you just don't draw another one, yeah. you lose the game. Exactly. Yeah, and in a, in a heavy, um, you know, removal world, it's not going to be easy to do, and that is why I want to go in the direction of putting more creatures in there, having more than just having those two creatures as early drops. You know, Clarion Spirit seems awesome. Um, you know, would love something like, you know, the three mana Chandra that returned a red spell and put two attackers into play. Something like that that would fit that Planeswalker mold. Or yeah. Chandra, Torch of Defiance, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, and something like that would be really nice, but I don't know uh, what really exists there. And on this deck side, you know, one, I, it's not powerful enough to play without any interaction in the main. So you yeah. need some interaction, and you also just need more big creatures. Like, it wasn't a good enough 10 the pest deck, uh, unless you had Damagoth Titan. Yeah. Uh, so I think Lovestruck Beast is a very easy addition that works really well. You could play Kazandu Mammoth as well. Or you could play... Croxa and Splash Red. Mm, yeah, you could Splash Red and <laughs> play Croxa. There's definitely some things to do, but just too many sort of okay three power creatures. Like yeah. I'm not even sure how good Sedge Morwitch and Plum the Forbidden were in this deck. Yeah, they were they were surprisingly mediocre because the rest of the deck is more creature heavy and yeah. these want to be spell heavy. Um, so you know there there's some some clear issues here, but the synergies are yeah. cool. We've seen Ten the Pest do good work. And your kingdom for a Lanaware Elf in that deck. Holy cow. Yeah. That's the card that would tie that room together. <laughs> I mean, we're playing Tangled Floorhedron, and that one makes a lot of sense. It does, I yeah, think yeah. Tangled Floorhedron into turn three, Yeah, you know, 11-10 uh, is really nice. Then the following turn, you get to just do the combo. So that this deck can yeah. kill you on turn four. Yeah, I wonder if you even want, like, Wolf Willow Haven. You know, I know it doesn't really synergize too well with your plan, but it, it's just more chances of getting that card down on turn on turn three and that just seems insane you know yeah yeah you could yeah. definitely be more of a ramp deck uh mm -hmm. in in that respect but the, yeah the i i get what the what yeoman was trying to build around but there's some clear flaws in uh yeah the accoutrement yeah so yeoman try a little harder okay i know you, you build 50 or 60 decks each set we're gonna need some more we're gonna need those updated constantly um yeah we're, we're offering all the exposure all of it. <laughs> so much exposure. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's going to do it for round number one here. We're going to take a short little break, and then coming up after the break, I'm going to be playing a Teamer Adventure show with um, the new Is It Dragon, Gala... Galazeth Prismari. Galazeth, yes. So, uh, really cool addition that's going to help us cast a large amount of all runs, and then we just have the, the pretty standard Teamer package as far as the adventure goes. So, looks like it would be a really cool deck moving forward, and I really want to see if this card is actually good in the deck, or if it uh, just makes the deck worse. Yeah, and on my side, I'm going to be playing a cool-looking Is It deck that did reasonably well in one of the challenges over the weekend, mm. uh, built around Improbable Alliance, which has started to see some play in the cycling decks, but there's now a lot of looting effects that exist in Is It, especially with Prismari Command. That's the big addition. Mm, okay. Uh, so really trying to take advantage of that and just a, a reasonable interactive deck. Yeah, that was a that was an original Ken Yuka Hero brew from League Weekend here before the set came out. Of course, Ken just came up with some wacky thing. Instead of playing cycling, you're just playing, you know, is it cycling essentially? And it was uh, it was a pretty cool deck. So we're going to take a short five minute break. I'll be right back with round number two here on Versus Live. All right, everybody, welcome back to Versus Live. My name is Corey Ballmeister, and I'm Ross Marion, and we got Rob in the booth. Say, Ross sucks, Rob. Ross sucks, Rob. 
Nice, nice, Rob. I'm glad you're back on my side. Rob will be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and wizard burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games, and he will get his favorite one sent over to us. All right, everyone, we're continuing our standard battle here on Versus Live today to get y'all ready for the SCG um, online events that are starting up on Friday. Uh, the satellites will be Friday and Saturday. We usually mention that at the end, but get you ready to uh, play some fun, new-looking standard, you know? I mean, it's not going to be as new as Historic, but <laughs> let's get real. We're spoiled with Historic right now. It is just magical Christmas land with all the cool new decks that are popping up, and people are finally figuring out like the power of abundant harvest, you know, and, and like all these spells are really starting to find cool homes. But standard, we're having at least some upgrades uh, to get us ready for this tournament. Um, as far as the, the good the good decks are getting some decent upgrades. And that's what I'm going to be playing today. A already really good deck, just upgraded with the, the Is It Dragon, making some treasures, trying to cast all runs Epiphany a little bit sooner um, and take all the turns. Yeah, and on my side, you know, upgrading this is it improbable alliance deck with the Prismaria <laughs> Command. Yep. Just a solid removal spell, can ramp you with a little bit of treasure. The looting is really nice and enabling all these escape cards. So this is a deck that is going to be well prepared against rogues with the escape cards in the main deck. Yeah. Because all of your looting effects enable them anyway, so you can mm. very easily play them. It's yeah, a really nice slap up rogues. Yeah, really nice uh, cards to discard to, you know, Teferi and the Royal Scions, as well mm. as Prismaria Command, generate card advantage that way playing our you know adventure creatures for interaction a little bit scared with the way this uh list is built because it's all fire prophecies and scorching dragon fires and no mm. soul seers okay so i'm scared of gold span dragon and <laughs> love strength beast no red cat melee mm, there's some red cat melee okay, we, okay. we got some answers for gold span dragon yeah, yeah uh yeah i'm pretty sure we got we got red cat melees yeah we got a couple of them and fair, some disdain, fair. we got a disdainful stroke in the sideboard too if we want that or two of those so. yeah uh i think i, I would uh, you know revise the sideboard a little bit if i were rebuilding the deck but cool. hopefully you know w w the the good news is we also just make a ton of blockers mm. so love struck beast can get blocked out a couple times while we race in the air sure uh you know gold fan dragon is going to be the bigger issue maybe you can work on this deck on your stream later this weekend yeah sure yeah that sounds like <laughs> what is your stream schedule these days i want to mm. i want to drop by it's been a while since i've uh, watched you stream well, normally i have to use the bathroom in the morning okay and then, <laughs> oh and then right before well, what, what is is it just mono soon <laughs> yeah yeah we're back to was, soon territory, y'all. Was, was that not what you were talking no, about? No, that's exactly what I was talking <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know my schedule. It's often. So. <laughs> yeah. Normally about three or four times a day. And we're going to be starting game number one here, y'all, on Versus Live round two. <laughs> oh, guessing you want to go first. Come uh, on. Indeed I do. And my hand is quite good. Uh, I think my hand is playable. That last card kind of saved me, so I'll try it. Uh, lead on a Roger and Triumph. Okay. Oh, lead on a Fabled Passage, and I'll pass to you. I have an Island and an Improbable Alliance. Uh, that seems pretty improbable. Pass the turn. I was having so much fun on uh, when I was doing coverage of League Weekend um, with Riley. And it, we just saw a lot of improbable alliances. I was like, it's starting to actually become pretty probable that yeah. they have these alliances. Oh, I think we've crossed the threshold. Up. Yeah. <laughs> I got an island, and I'll pass to you. I'm an Izzet deck, too. Are you, though? Yep. Well, I've got a, a Lava Glide pathway. Okay. And an improbable alliance. Okay. And an opt. Okay. Scry. I think we can put this Bone Crusher on the bottom. Okay. And draw. Ooh, that's my second card. Oh, I'll, I'll get... kill one of them. Okay, stomping one fairy. Yep. And then it'll be your turn. All right, I'm on an adventure. Um, now, let's just play Bone Crusher. Pass to you. A mountain. Okay. I will hack for one. Nineteen. And pass the turn. Oh. I'll come in with the beat downs. Um. Yeah, I'll take four. 16. All right. What do you have over there? 
have a passage. Of course, the Teamer Mana Base, I'm looking at so many symbols of mana in my hand, and I have to just pick which ones I would like to cast. Um, what do you got going on over there? You probably got some counter spells in that deck. Um... Hmm. Will you show me your hand to make this decision a little easier, please? Okay, thank you. Joke's on you. I'm a palm reading wizard. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it turns out I want to go to the doctor soon, Ross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I guess this is kind of cute. I'm going to crack this. If you saw my stream schedule, you would know I definitely need to go to a doctor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Because <laughs> your gameplay is so sick? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Something like that. Okay, okay. All right. I'm going to go for a dragon. Um, dragon is going to resolve. Okay. Trigger on the stack. Okay. I am going to Prismari Command, Faithless Looting, and make a treasure. Okay. Oh, um, that is pretty sweet with Improbable Lions. Definitely got to pitch the Snarl. Always pitch the Snarl. And, yeah, I'll pitch the Mountain, too. So that'll make two more fairies. Okay. And then I've got a treasure. Do we have treasures anywhere? I have the only oh, treasure. Over here. Yep. Um, and then, you know, I don't think you can. You've already played your land. Yeah. Probably can't do anything with that mana. So there's no reason for me to pitch the treasure, I don't think. Yeah, I guess if I like drew it. a land next turn, it would behoove me to <laughs> to do this. Because then I'd be one mana short of doing what I want to do. Okay, I've convinced myself if I draw a land. So let's do this now, and I'll uh, petty theft the dragon. Okay. And I'll pass to you. And now I will fire prophecy the bone crusher giant. Take two. Okay. I go to fourteen. Yep. And I guess I'll put this on the bottom. Okay. And draw my card for turn, or draw my card from that. Get two more fairies. Okay. I'm scared. Yeah. And then attack for three. Okay. I'll go to sixteen. You do go to sixteen. Then I'll pass the turn. All right, a draw. Pretty decent draw. All right, I got this, and I got a gold span dragon coming. Dragons, dragons, dragons. Okay, well, before you attack, I'll petty theft it. Get another treasure. Yeah, get a treasure, and then I will... Um... Sack both treasures for four, two blue, two red. Uh, you can't do that in. Why not? Huh? Why not? Because you're in combat. Obviously, I'm bouncing in your beginning of. Oh. Beginning of combat steps. I said. Oh well, you didn't say that. I said before you attack. Well, that's in my main phase. <laughs> okay, so you're giving me a treasure. We're in combat, huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Come on, give me some credit here. Hey, you know, follow the rules. I am following the rules. <laughs> uh, Come on, Ross. Obviously, Corey's rules. <laughs> Follow yeah. my rule. <laughs> I am the one who rules. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, I will still sack for blue and red, and we'll kill two tokens. Sure. Uh, get an adventure, and this is back to my hand. All right. Here we go. Okay. I will play an opt. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that can go to the bottom. Okay. And we'll get two fairies. Okay. And we'll attack for three. Thirteen. Those fairies are annoying. Asteus, uh, Corey playing magic like it's 1996. <laughs> and then I will pass the turn. Okay. Um... All 
right. Gold Span Dragon. Resolve. Attack. Yep. Treasure. I'm at 14. Yep. Um. Yeah, I'll go to 10. Okay. Um. Then I'm gonna sack for two red. Gonna fire prophecy a token. And I'm gonna put this on bottom. A draw. Awful draw, and I'll pass to you. And on your end step, I'm gonna Prismari Command, deal oh. you two, and loot. God, that is a nice addition with Improbable Alliance. Yeah, just all in one to be able to make fairies on your turn. It's yeah. really nice. All right, I'm probably done. a couple lands. Uh, attack you for six. Okay, I'm down to five. Uh, yeah, 11 and then to five. Then I will play an opt. Yeah. Um, that's actually a somewhat interesting one. If a little awkward, I'm going to have eight tokens. You're at five. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to kill me. Even if you play the land and add two blockers or removal spell blocker, that would not be enough. Got an ember cleave in my deck. Uh, but I'm going to have two blockers. Yeah, yeah. So even if you had one mana removal spell ember cleave, I guess you're going to get a you're going to get a treasure. So if you have the land that's eight mana, you'd have three mana left. You would need you would need land ember cleave two removal spells, one of which only costs one mana. Mm -hmm. It doesn't don't think is in your deck. Yeah, my hand is pretty close to that. But I will put this into my hand in that case because I might have to throw away some fairies to play around some odd scenarios. So I'll make two uh, uh -huh. tokens there, and then we'll play this Rogger and Triome and pass. And be sad that I had to play this Pet Flavigod Pathway on the red side. Sad. Because then I'd have a Brazen Borrower as well. The Brazy Bee. Um. Okay, I have a pretty spicy turn. I have a gold span dragon. Yep. I'll attack. Get two treasures. And you have three in hand. Three in hand. Yeah, so to play around Ember Cleave, I do have to block both. So I will. Okay. Do you have two removal spells? Maybe. I have, I'll sack this for this. Okay. I'll get a treasure and I'll pass to you. It was in your hand. Yep. N now I will. I guess that's also good. So what could you possibly have? Uh. Even if your hand was two one mana removal spells. Oh, I'm at five. Yeah, but I drew a stomp, so oh, okay. attack you. All right, I have pretty close to that. <laughs> two innkeepers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the inn was kept nice, but yeah, yeah we drew those a little late. Ended up keeping Teferi on top, figuring I could get rid of a blocker. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, probably yeah. good enough. Yeah, I was dead. Uh, obviously also very good with Improbable Alliance. Yeah, Improbable Alliance ate me up. Also, you know, um, had some nice tempo plays for me. Well, I'm glad Corey got you to think about the Ember Cleave that isn't in his deck. It's in my deck. It's sure. just in it's my in your side sideboard. Deck. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, remember, when we blatantly lie to each other, you gotta let it go, okay? Because that's half the fun of the show. <laughs> I gotta let it go for the game, but... Yeah. <laughs> Siding this in for the next game? <laughs> All right, Rob, you got any questions for us? It was still the only conceivable thing that could lose me the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, now if you know it's not in there, then you know it's not conceivable. Well, that's the whole point. Rob, you got any buses you want to drive over my face over there? Or? Inconceivable. <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, look, it's not my fault Ross didn't actually look over your list. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, so do you think that Ragdos or Jund sack could see play in standard right now, or do you think the green kind of sack decks are where it needs to be? In, a, in what format? Standard. Oh, in standard. Oh. So here's the thing with the sacrifice decks, and they all fit the same template. 
Uh, and they're all bad against the Salt Ultimatum deck. All of them. It doesn't matter how you how you build them. They're just not going to be good. They're they're very resilient decks that can win with Corvold as like their speed or you know Golgari's the same vein. They're they're not hyper aggressive, and they're not super controlling. So these style of mid range decks are pretty good against like rogues. They're okay against adventures and stuff. But you're gonna get blown up by Salt Ultimatum decks. So it's a product of meta gaming. There's a lot of rogues and a very small amount of Salt I. I will be playing some Crocs, uh, uh, Ten the Past, Corvold decks because I, I generally think that's a good deck. And, you know, main deck Croxa is good against Rogues, which I expect to be popular. But I think this weekend especially, people are just going to cast Emergent Ultimatum, and I think it's a bad choice for this weekend, personally. That said, I do think Awaken the Blood Avatar could open up avenues for a Sakurai stack that is more aggressive. Yeah. Uh, still probably won't have a great matchup against Sultai, but if it's good enough while retaining the good matchups against the rest of the field, you could be well-positioned even still in Still four Heartless Axe in those decks, you know? Mm -hmm. Like... You just you just hit the three six right. Let sure. them stack their things. Yeah. But they tap out for things like cultivate and stuff, so you at least get a hit in, hit or two in. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not I'm not buying what you're throwing down, but I do uh, agree that you can try to go a little more aggressive. It's just is it possible? See, the thing that I like a little bit more for the aggressive slant is these combo plum decks. You know that have Bastion of Remembrance. You know that's that's the version of token. You're almost like Jun tokens then. You know, that stuff is okay because you really can just win out of nowhere. You can still get claimed the firstborns for aggro matchups. Um, you know, you you did some good things with plum kind of combo decks where whenever yeah. you lose life or gain life, they Dynad drain as with well. Apprentice and... Exactly. That I like more than just Crocs of big over the top stuff. Um, but it's going to have its bad matchups too, you know? So you're trading, you're sacrificing something for another and you're sacrificing all your pests. Yeah. So th there's a lot more avenues open up for sacrifice decks, and mm -hmm. the, there's always going to be the question of, can you beat the Sultai deck? Yep. So if you can find a sacrifice deck that does that without, you know, completely tanking the rest of his matchups, yep. then you've got something going. So that is like a good thing to just, when you're getting ready for a big tournament like that, and, and you want to play a deck like this, get a buddy and just say, hey, I want to play five matches against your Sultai. If you can't beat it, get off it, you know, join them. All right, I will be going first here. Corey out here trying to convince everyone to play Yorian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's what I do, bud. It's what I do. I'll keep. I will keep as well. I have the unbeatable start. Catch your triumph. <laughs> In Teamer, you need this land. That's not a harsh desire. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. You're a raw grin triumph. Wow, you're such a one-upper. Okay, um, I'm just going to foretell, and I'll pass to you. Remember, this is a foretell zone. You forget every time. So when I when I put this spell up, you know you gotta you gotta know what what's happening, okay? Yeah, four turns from now you're gonna try to time walk. Yep, exactly. Um, I will heart's desire, another zone. Come here, Shaheen. And uh, what else do I want to do? I will just pass to you. There's not like a card that lets you foretell any card, right? Yeah, there uh, is. There is the black creature. There is the Two devourer deck. or whatever. All right, we need to we need to build that deck with the um with the sky sovereign from uh Khaled, or from Aether Revolt, and then just have the. It could be a boat deck. <laughs> yeah, it could be anything. It is a boat. <laughs> Rob's out here with the big ideas. I like the way you think, Rob. Smart, smart. <laughs> uh, I did not draw another land, which was a very awkward. Oh, by the way, last game, if you didn't kill my dragon that turn, I was going to be able to Heart's Desire off that treasure, so I was so mad when you wouldn't let me do that. It's not like it would have been that good, but it would have been cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am going to Fire Prophecy the Shaheen token. In response, I'll Petty Theft the uh, Improbable Alliance. Good beats. Thank you, thank you. Uh, definitely want to put that one on the bottom. Okay. And draw, and I will play a tapped snarl. Snarl. Snarl, snarl. Um, all right. I have, uh, half this deck's problem is just making sure you play the pathways in the right direction. That's like the whole thing. All right. So I will go with a lava glide and we got a dragon pass to you. Wow. Um, 
Almost out of gas now, but that's okay. Luckily, pass, we have all the these turn. zones. Um, beat towns. I got a seventeen. Um, I will. Play a Timber Crown a pathway. And it's close. I do want to play something here. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm going to play Lovestruck Beast. That's fine. Past you. Uh, on your end step, I will play Brazen Borrower. Brazen B? Um, yep. On tap. Yep. Uh, Attack for three. Rabble. I'll stop. Ooh, actually. <laughs> putting Ross in the tank early on this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's awkward when you've seen six draws and none of them are land. <laughs> Smallest violin right here, Rob. I just got um, it. Fresh for today's show. Now we're in real trouble. You thought you were going to play it for yourself all day, but... Um, yeah, yeah, probably. That's how the shows have been, that's for sure. Yeah, ever since that Improbable Alliance play, the tempo sh has shifted. There's really the gallows up, but... Just admit that I just wrecked you with that play. Just admit it. <laughs> really out here trying to play X1s against a Bone Crusher Giant? Come on. <laughs> yeah. In this economy? <laughs> ah, that just... Mm. <laughs> I saw the funniest tweets. Emma does those fun tweets like thinking of her, thinking of them, like with showing different magic cards that are old. Sperling is like me in standard for till the end of time, and it's just thinking of him, the stomp target. It was so good. <laughs> oh. Estea said, look at me. I am the tempo deck now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll counter it. All right. Take three. You're at 17. You're up. And the reason I did that, which I'm sure you figured out, was yeah, to bait out a counter spell so I can do this and cast all runs. Yeah. And get some birdies. Yeah, I probably should just let the stompers all Yeah, an attack for eight. I mean, but then you just have the two, three drops, like, and I can't beat those either. Oh, yeah. So. That, that would have been my play, is yeah. just create three drops if you don't negate it, but, you know. You were in a rock and a hard place there for sure. Yeah. If I'd hit fourth land, I had two negates. I would have gotten yeah. you good. <laughs> I don't know why you let me untap. <laughs> because I love you. Um, but yeah, I'm dead. Okay. Take eight. Take another turn. Take ten. Let's go. All right. That's going to do it for our first two games. We split them. So we're going to head to the sideboard and see what we got up our sleeves. Don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss this thrilling conclusion on match number two. See you soon. Welcome back to Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our matchup between Is It Alliance and Teamer Adventures. On my side of things, we got some red cap melees to help deal with these Galazeths and Goldspan Dragons. Yep. Got some Disdainful Strokes to help counter some of the more expensive cards, just a better counter spell than Negate. Yep. Mystical Dispute is always a consideration when your opponent has their own disputes. The Cory's deck is so light on blue that I don't think it's worth it. Um, and then Galazeth and all runs, that's about it. Yeah. But yeah. Then I'm trimming one Phoenix of Ash. Uh, I think Phoenix is pretty bad in a matchup where the 3-3 three, three body doesn't match up well against a lot of your opponent's threats. Yep. You know, it's still fine because you can threaten to pump and trade, uh, but that's just a very mana inefficient play. Yeah. You want to be able to just put player for four and get in there. And Corey, you know, all the dragons in Corey's deck, as well as just trading for Brazen Borrower, 
uh, makes Phoenix of Ash. I think the weakest creature, so that's the one I cut to make room for the four spells I wanted. Yeah, and I'm just thinking uh, last minute change here. My Brazen Borrowers aren't that good, and four those Phoenixes, I think I'm going to cut a couple of those. The X1 body is awful, um, and the bounce is just okay. We saw it be the best possible last game, but that situation is not going to come up a lot. So we're going to make a, a little last minute change there. But otherwise, we're bringing in Mystical Dispute. I'd play four of them against you if I could. Countering Improbable Alliance on the draw is huge. Playing Galazeth and then being able to hold up Dispute is super nice. Clothis seems pretty good at dealing with Phoenixes, as well as just keeping my life total high while still getting you down there when it comes to these token battles, you know? Ember Cleave so that you still will play around the one of, you know, naturally. I do have four for my commands, but. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> taking out two brazen bars as well. Um, oh, whoops, yeah, taking these out, bringing these in. Um, taking out two Disdainful Stroke, you only have like Teferi. Um, they're pretty bad. Two all runs epiphany. I have to expect a good amount of disputes from you or just other counter spells. Um, so we play four. So we're just going down to two. And then two brazen bars and then the one fire prophecy as an upgrade uh, to Scorching Dragonfire. Okay. Yeah. Rob, you got some questions for us while we shuffle up here for game number three. I do. Do you think that uh, Jodzi could see play in some of the bigger ultimatum or five color uh, decks in the format? I don't think that card's very good. Yeah, I agree. I've yeah. not been impressed with it. The fact that it is an eight mana card that doesn't really have an immediate impact on the battlefield. Yeah. Like when you cast it for eight mana, it is a five five. Yep. It is literally slightly better than Love Struck Beast. Yep. Yeah. No, I just think that card is actually it was it was so overhyped. People were trying it. I mean it wasn't it wasn't that hyped, but it was hyped a non-zero amount, and that's over. Yeah. I did not card. <laughs> and, and the, the Magecraft ability isn't even consistent. Like no. You have to reveal a top card and see if it's a spell that you get to cast. Yeah, if it was like reveal until you hit a spell, sure, maybe that card's good yeah. enough then. But even then, you'd still be hitting Cultivates and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you know, no, that card's just not it. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I Give just... up, throw that card in the trash. Don't put it in any decks. If you get in limited, maybe play it. Like we, I played, uh, it was another Yoma deck, actually. I played it with yeah. Luca, right? I remember And that, yeah. I did some cool stuff with it one game, but the Luca, uh, you know, Jodzi part of my deck was the worst part of the deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything else the deck was doing was way better. Yeah, no, I just think it's not it. It's definitely not it. Uh, right. I will keep my hand. Yeah, I'll try it. Lead on a Fable Passage. Okay. Ooh, not a bad draw. Um, I'll play an innkeeper past you. Get myself a mountain. Okay. Not what I thought, but I do have an improbable alliance. Okay. Pass the turn. Um, I have an attack for one. 19. Then... I'm going to Heart's Desire, go on an adventure, and just debate which land I want to play. I think I'll play this, and I'll pass to you. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. I will just play the Royal Scions. Mm. Don't, Don't have a that. removal spell. Don't mind that. Literally the first game I haven't had a removal spell in my opening hand, and yeah. Casual and Keeper immediately mm -hmm. shows up. But yeah. we'll loot. Yeah, you do get a token, though, so that's yeah. not bad. Discard a Phoenix, get a token, pass the turn. Okay. Yeah, that's actually pretty strong. I'm pretty afraid of that, actually. Um, Slams Clothis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of the Royal Scions. Hmm... All right, I got Clothis. I will cut attack with Shaheen. Yeah, no, nope, I'll pass. That is cute. Uh, I will plus the Royal Scions. Okay. That will uh, get me another fairy while I think about what to discard. Okay. So I have another Fable Passage in my hand, which could just let me escape Phoenix. Okay. And then your Clothis does nothing next turn. I get to start attacking with it. I've got, you know, I'll leave back both fairies. Sure. Uh, to protect this Royal Scions. 
you're not going to be able to... Um, I guess you could, like, upkeep, cast a spell to get some value out of the Clothis, but that's, you know... Just fine. Yeah, it's whatever. Uh, like, I think worst-case scenario would be, like, upkeep, Scorching Dragonfire, your Phoenix, Exile, my Dragonfire. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably be your best bet. Uh, alternatively, I could just to cast both of these spells. Um, and that would, you know, both set you back and deal with the innkeeper, which I like. I kind of like that a little bit more. My innkeeper? Yeah, I'm going to pitch an island. Okay. Um, if I'm going to do it that way, maybe I want to pitch the Fable Passage because then next turn I can Phoenix of Ash with no cards left in my library or in my graveyard. But you're going to have the Innkeeper anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, let's let's pitch the island. Okay. Uh, play Fable Passage. Okay. Sack it. Get an island. I will uh, bounce Clothis with Petty Theft, Stomp, Innkeeper. Okay. Yeah, Double that's Adventure. Disgusting. And now I can attack for one with a fairy. Okay. Think pretty safely. Uh, am I? Was that first damage? Yeah. So I think I've I've just both at nineteen. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was disgusting. And then I'll pass the turn. Ugh. Now we're in trouble. Yeah. Now the phoenix is just ready to come back if Corey wants to recast the clothis. Hmm. Yeah, that's bad for me because I didn't hit a land. Yeah. Oof, no land. I, w I was going to be scared if you went like land Galazeth. Yeah. That would definitely be a pretty strong line. Yep, here we go. Yeah, so definitely going to try to exile these lands so that Cory can't get mana off the Clothis. Makes sense. I'm perfectly fine if he just drains me a little bit. Drain, drain, drain. Uh, so I will plus the Royal Scion. Yeah, this Royal Scion has just been insane. Loot. Uh, I don't get me so hard to kill. Fairy, I will discard. I guess I can just discard opt, though. So I'm gonna eventually get rid of this, but I'm gonna be drawing a bunch of cards anyway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's discard the opt. Okay, play Phoenix, exiling the three lands. Okay, um, now just in case Corey has like a removal spell, I'm gonna leave back two fairies. We'll get only get in for four. Okay. Yeah, because that just ultimates, huh? Yeah. Ultimate What's the six. ultimate again? Like, I, I lose I draw four cards and then deal damage to a target equal to the number of cards in my hand. Okay. So you're going to go to 15. 15? Okay. I'll pass the turn. All right. I will draw. We got a cloth of trigger. I assume we're hitting the opt. Yeah, let's hit that. So uh, we're going to both end at 17 then? Yep. And then I'm going to just cry for a little bit because I'm in a lot of trouble. Um... Yeah. Probable Alliance, Royal Scions. It's a curve. That is a curve. Fixes your draws, make a one flyer every turn. Eventually. All the BS, yep. The yep. flyers make it easy to defend the Royal Scions. I'll attack. I will block with a fairy. Okay. Um... Don't think I can let you ultimate here, so I think I have to just deal some damage to that, which does not feel good. But ultimating would not feel good either, but maybe ultimating is like not as terrible. Um, I mean, what, how many cards you got? I have three in hand. So you draw a card and then you draw four cards, I'd take eight. You've done the math. <laughs> I found it, I found it. The lines. Um, yeah, I don't love it, but I think I am actually going to just Scorching Dragonfire the Phoenix and let you ultimate. Pass to you. Interesting. Yep. Can't say it's going to work out well for me, but... Yeah, I will ultimate. Take eight. Uh, so you're going to go to nine. Yep. Ow. I'm going to make I believe another you get a fairy. <laughs> yeah, make another fairy. I did not hit another land, which is incredibly awkward. So you just have gas in the tank, huh? Um 
So let's get in for two. Okay, I'm down to seven. And I guess that means uh, I do have eight cards in hand. So, mm -hmm. God, that's incredibly awkward. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat eight cards, though. <laughs> Definitely gonna need some land, that's step one. I guess I will, uh, I wanna do this in your turn so I get a, a fairy, but if I don't do it, <laughs> I lose a card by not doing it now. Yeah, try to find a land drop with command. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess I, I still have, I still haven't made one this turn, so I actually don't lose a fairy. Yeah. No, I, I did, because I made one off the, off yeah, the drop. Yeah, you already made one, you yeah, four. I did yeah. make one. That's when I was, um, so do I want to throw away a card to get an extra fairy? I have you at seven right now. Yep. But cloth is going to be gaining me some life. I'm going to be having a cloth as in a dream here. Yeah, I'm just going to go to discard. Okay. Oh, no. I can't choose three mode. Why was I thinking I could do that? <laughs> um... Ugh, why is this so awkward? <clears throat> Guess I should have just done this. That would have been better. Yeah, okay, well, we screwed up. <laughs> All right, make a play, make a play. Yeah, I'll just go to discard and pitch this ox. All right. It's not gonna do anything. I will draw, yeah, get that ox out of there. Nine to 19. Yep. Nine or sorry, nine, nine to 15. fifteen. Yep. Yeah, I go down. Yeah, that wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be the best. Um. Okay. So I'm going to play a pathway, and I'm just gonna say go. Okay. Well, I will attempt to double loot and make a treasure. A yeah, dispute. I will attack you for three. Oh, I got to stop. Take two. Go to seven. Yep. Uh, now I've got seven cards in hand. Pass the turn. Okay. I will oh, draw. That was an awful draw. Let's, yeah, let's take out that. Uh, so back to nine for you. I go to 13. Yep. And... Then I will pass to you. Hey, same thing. Same thing. Now I might also... I'm also going to stomp. Fast you. Wow. Yeah, I wish I had more disputes in this matchup. They seem great. Okay, got another pathway. Attack for one. Okay, down to eight. Pass the turn. On to Odra. Tilt. I'll take a command. Actually, I'm, I'm going to make this a red pathway. Okay. So you go to 10, I go to 11? Yep. And then I will... Cast a Heart's Desire. That's fine. And a Bone Crusher Giant. Yep. Pass to you. Okay, on your end step, I will double loot and make a treasure. Okay. Now the dispute shield is down. Uh, gonna discard Phoenix of Ash and Bone Crusher Giant. Okay. And get a fairy. Yep, I do get a fairy. Oh, that's a bird. Uh, yeah. But I'm the bird deck. Got to keep that straight. Then I will also play Brazen Borrower. Okay. Making a blue with the treasure. Yep, I'm scared. Go to my turn. Yep. <laughs> Am I dead? I needed to draw a land and I drew a snarl. Yeah, justice. Yeah, I have another stop, obviously, after yep. that one. That would have been 10. Yep. 
Because the Phoenix. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, I still have a pretty good. Yeah, I figure I'm still dead, but. Yeah, so let's uh, get in for five. Down to five. And uh, bounce Clothus. No. My Clothus. Fire Prophecy, the Bone Crusher. I'll go to nine. Yep. And I will put this Snarl on the bottom. Okay. And draw a card, get another fairy. Okay. Drew another land. I'll play River Glide Pathway and pass the turn. Yep, that'll do it. Yeah. GG. I've got a pretty good hand here. Yeah. Well, I figure when you have eight cards, you're going to discard after not playing a land. You're probably going to have some gas on the tank. Yeah. <laughs> well, a little hairy against the Clothis, but yeah, really yeah. just a sort of a matter of time before your mystical disputes ran out and yeah. I started resolving Yeah, things. my disputes were insane. Yeah. I mean, if I could have draw, drew some more land and was able to pressure with all those adventure creatures while holding up dispute instead of just holding up dispute, would have been a lot yeah, better. Then it would have gotten actually hairy. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, let's play one more game. We'll see if we, yeah, we probably just play one pity game then, huh? Mm. Our last That's match is an aggressive one, so we maybe could stretch this. It's only if I were to win, yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it's only 2-1. I don't I don't want to really play five games of this because then we're going to bump to that. Why don't we just play five of the next one? Five of the next one? Yeah. That sounds good to me. My deck for the marbles. Sweet. Yeah, and it's for the marbles. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll play two pre, th or three pre, two post. I like it. As okay. long as we got time, that sounds great. So we are going to take a short break. What do you got uh, after the break? I am uh, playing a viewer submitted deck that I've made some slight modifications to. Okay. This is a deck that we talked about on a previous show. Oh, what a slap to the viewer submitted deck. That's uh, real cool, yeah. man. Not something you do all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we talked about playing Of One Mind as another good, cheap, uh, you know, draw spell with yeah. this Sedgemore Witch engine. Yeah. Uh, and being in Sultai, because it works well, you know, Love Struck Beast makes a human and a non-human, Sedgemore Witch, human and non-human. Uh, and we're also they also came up with Joel Rail, which makes human non-human. The tokens are on here. So That's sweet. We've got Village Rights and Of One Mind with Joel Rail. Okay. And this token theme and Plum the Forbidden. Uh, yeah, it looks really cool. Cool. I'm playing a Sandy Dog special. I'm playing Mono Red Snow. Mono Red Agro Snow. But with some new cards, um, I know Sandy posted this on Twitter. The list looked pretty cool, and you know it's kind of the kind of the bad guy of the of the format. It keeps a lot of decks in check. You know, when you forget about mono red, uh, then it's really good, and then when you have mono red on your mind, it's that twenty nine percent win rate deck that we know and love so much. So we'll see how it is right now. I like Sandy's changes to the deck, so they look really cool. We're gonna take a couple cool new additions too. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna take a short five minute break. I'll be right back with round number three here on Versus Live. Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Mary. And I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we've got Rob in the booth say, actually, I was lying, Corey. Ross is awesome, Rob. Actually, I was lying. Rob, I've, I've got, I don't See, know. See, you can't even say know. that. That incorrect <laughs> statement can't even come out of his mouth. So I got like that. halfway through, then I realized you said like literally all of our names. I know. And I just, I. <laughs> yeah, so you're you're back to, uh, you're back to hating Ross now, right? Uh, hi, Rob. Okay. <laughs> at least I'm not reciting poetry verses at you. Yeah, that's true. We're yeah. all thankful for that. <laughs> we'll get back into that soon. Okay, thanks, thanks. Rob will be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. It is a standard battle today on Versus Live, trying to get prepared for this weekend's action, which is really going to be sort of week one of standard. You know, last weekend really featured historic. Yep. Everybody's excited about that format. This weekend, we're going to see, you know, can Strixhaven, you know, make some inroads into the dominance of Throne of Eldrain, Rogues, Adventures, and whatnot. Yep. I know, you know, I think the, the sentiment has been pretty consistent. Uh, across the community, it was very pessimistic at the beginning of preview season. Uh -huh. And as people have played with them a little bit on Arena, we're starting to see some cards that actually look really powerful that can yep. make an impact. And everyone's starting to, to become a little bit more optimistic as yep. time has gone on. So it should be a very interesting weekend. It will be. Uh, as we said throughout the show, we do have the SCG Tour online for the Strixhaven Championship. Uh, yeah, Strict Saving Championship qualifiers yep. uh, this weekend, back after a hiatus last week. Uh, so you're going to get to see, you know, four satellites Friday, four uh, Saturday, and then the qualifier itself on Sunday. Mm -hmm. A lot of, you know, chance for the metagame to churn even, even in the course of three days. A and lot a lot of, of time to see some cool decks pop up, too. Exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, so that's why we're, you know, featuring Standard Day. We've had two pretty good matches to start. Mm -hmm. This last one is going to be for the marbles. Oh, yeah. Uh, keep in mind that Corey is wearing that wizard hat because he just likes it. I just like it. Yeah. yeah. So that's his new I actually just statement. might keep it. I, I'm kind of, it's comfy. <laughs> because I won previous seasons, so that is his ah. punishment. And uh, well, I also won call time. Can they see the uh, the Viking helmet, Rob? Yeah, it's, it's there. Uh, yeah. so, well, you'll see the wizard helmet, uh, the wizard hat behind uh, behind me as well. Uh, and maybe Corey will get a trinket, you know, at a, at a later date. Yeah, I'm going to win the D&D &D board for the next one or whatever we're going to be doing for that. <laughs> Ooh, I, I don't know what our trick is going to be for D&D. &D. Yeah. All right. It'll just be an imaginary gift because you got to play that game a lot with your with your yeah. imagination. You, you so. just get a pen and paper. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a nice piece of pen and paper. So I'm going to be wrapping up today with a slightly modified viewer-submitted deck. As I said before the break, we talked on a show the idea of playing Of One Mind in this Sedgemore Witch Plum the Forbidden Shell, mm. uh, and that's what this deck is doing. It was, a, uh, I think, a, a great addition to play Joel Rail in this deck. The yep. two changes I made were to play Witherbloom Apprentice over Skyclave Shade, which was in the original list. I think Apprentice is just too important to that Plum engine uh, and just goes really well in the deck. Uh, also applying pressure. Just been very impressed by that card. Yeah. Even though you know, I played it in Historic on Tuesday, I was impressed with it in that deck. Yeah, that was sweet. So that, that was really that sweet. That might have been an oversight on ours early on in previous season. Mm -hmm. but, you know, just two mana, two, two, you get to drain them a little bit, but it, the damage really does add up. Yeah, all we do is just picture dies to stomp. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, this is a matchup where stomp is going to be a factor, and stomp is going to be quite good, and I have eight of them. I have frostbites as well. So it's going to be a real test. I'm playing the fun police. I'm just trying to attack with little red creatures. It's a Sandy Dogs list. Um, Anytime I want to play a red deck, it doesn't happen often, but anytime I want to play a red deck, that's who I look to. You know, he's always perfecting, always innovating when it comes to mono red and always puts up results with it. Even when it's bad, Sandy still finds a way to uh, get it done. So uh, anybody that wants to be good at mono red, Check yeah. out his uh, Twitter account. A couple for sure. cool new additions for this list. Yep. Construct Saving 2 Hall Monitor as an additional one drop. And Conspiracy uh, Theorist. Yeah. Card I like quite a bit. Yeah, um, they're both pretty interesting. You know, yeah. I, I think it's just a good piece of card advantage for a deck with a very mm -hmm. low curve. Yep. So it plays well when you're adding more one drops like Hall Monitor when you have Frostbite now. There's a ton of one mana spells and two mana spells to use with it, so you're getting value immediately. Well, that's on oh. about right for the first hand here. So, real, real Hall quick. <laughs> We had two suggestions for okay. what we can have for the D and D set. Okay. Goblin King twenty two said a red dragon pet, and <laughs> okay. Hisaya said a hollow massive D twenty wears a hat. Oh, there've got to be like D twenty hats, right? That is the next set, right? The D and D one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Which I'm guessing is coming out in like a week and a half. We're starting preview season soon, uh, I'm two, guessing. Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah, okay. They, okay. they want to give us a little more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the next set is Modern Horizons 2, and that was my favorite limited set. So I'm actually really pumped for this, and I think Modern is still fun. Like, Modern Cues are still great. I, I jumped in a league the other day. Still had a blast, but you know what? It's kind of stale, surprisingly. Like, Heliod Company and Prowess decks have just really, you know, kind of proven their dominance, and now it's just it's just kind of that, you know? So I, I, I'm ready for a modern shakeup. I'm, I'm hoping um, that yeah. somebody can find a deck that plays Vanishing Verse effectively, because that's a very clean answer yep. to Heliod. I actually wrote about that for my What We Would Play. It's in the sideboard of um, my Bring to Light uh, five yeah. color list just as a better celestial purge yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, that thing i think that card's great all right you yes, keeping it yours doesn't exile crocs so that purge hits that's probably the one hole yep but there's plenty of other cards that versus so that oh yeah them, so how's your end uh it's fine i would be much happier on the play but yeah the sound is a keep but it's not very good so i'll put this on the bottom i will play a land and pass okay. to you no one drop is great that was not great i'm gonna try them <laughs> okay also, Dr. JMG would like to know the most important rating for Strixhaven. Corey, where does it fall on your pun value? You know, God, I haven't played I haven't played a lot of it on Arena yet, so I have to play them with seeing the cards, you know, in my element to be able to see how much puns I like in the set. So I, I I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. Let's rob you. Give me that top card. Ooh, pass to you. I'll take an Optaru. Oh my god. No land drop? Oh no, I've got plenty of land drops. <laughs> okay. I of course drew land land and you you robbed the spell. <laughs> yes, yes. Um so yeah, I just have a land and a pass. Okay. Um I have a land and I'll declare tax. Yep. Trigger. Okay. 
Okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go to 16. You're at 16, and then what do I want to do? Probably just wanna play my good on curve threat. I'll play Nanix. Fast to you. Wow. Okay, Bark Channel Pathway, I'll play Joel Rail. Okay. Then I'll cast an opt. Okay. Get yourself a kitty. Um, I just don't think that's good enough. I'm behind. Toski is good when you're ahead. Yep. So we have to bin that. Okay. And hit an okay one, and I'll pass the turn. One tip, a draw. Not a great card there, but how many cards you got? I have six. Okay. Um, now I'm going to play a Fireblade Charger. Yep. Play a Fireblade Charger. Yep. I'm going to declare attacks, trigger this. Okay. I will put the cat in front of the robber. I'm going to opt. Yep. Don't need that card. I'll draw. This will have me taking four. One, two, three, or four, five. 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 And then I get a one, one. Yeah, so I'm at 11. And I'll pass to you. And this needs to be a good draw. Yes, it does. Oh, well, you know, it could be another land. <laughs> Just what the doctor ordered. I'll play a set more, Rich. Okay. And I'll pass the turn. And I'll untap. I'll draw. Um, now I will move to combat. Sure. Depending if I just want to go all in or just attack with these three since I get a 1-1 one -one if they die. Um... You can just like block here. If you block here, I get to deal damage. You know, it does seem like it kind of just gives you a free block. Yeah, I'll get in there. Huh. So you just have the Ember Cleave and you're slow rolling. What? <laughs> <laughs> I have an Ember Cleave. Yeah. <laughs> you're not attacking with the Seder if you don't have the Ember Cleave. <laughs> I don't need to. I can still have three here. Yeah, yeah I'm still, yeah, yeah, I'm still yeah. dead regardless. But I believe, you would. I believe in yeah. the cleave. Captain, Captain Four Lander drew four lands. Nice, nice. Not great. You probably shouldn't have did that. You probably shouldn't have did that. All right. I mean, next turn, I was opting into Plum the Forbidden. Maybe that would have done something. That's a lot of cards. Yeah. That's a lot of cards. Yeah, getting Witch and Jorel. Jorel. Is it Jorel or Jorel? I've always, it's Joel Rail. Joel Rail, J -O -L. okay. Um, if Joel you, Rail. I'm if, not entirely sure. If you get both of those out and you start drawing some cards, that's pretty disgusting. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely tough to do in this matchup. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I got Frostbites. I got Stomps. That's really it, but that's it. That's enough. You know, yeah. that's enough. And, and that is the big thing is these decks snowball, you know, very well um, when you can keep your threats on the board. But if I can stop them one at a time... It's gonna be gonna be a little tougher for you. Yeah, and normally I'd be fine playing that kind of grindy game against mono red. Yeah. but you eventually just built the Embercleave. Embercleave is and is the go over the top effect too, where like you can have a lot of pests to chump and stuff, but believing in the cleave, uh, you just need one creature lying around, five mana, and, and you're good to go. <laughs> exactly. It's easy to get in a longer game. <laughs> All right, so Sandy Dog Special takes number one. Rob, you got one quick question before we start this next game? I do not at the moment. Good. Good. We just wanted to battle anyways. Yeah, we are going to be, be uh, trying to play best of five. Yeah. I, I assume we'll have time. I think we'll have some time. I'll be able to 3 you in no time. Oh, yeah. Well, this is pretty close to the blade. Pretty close to said blade. What do you think, chat? Blade? From A to F here. Is it A being the blade, F being my puns? Yeah. Uh, mine's an easy keep. Okay. I'll Bring run Bark Channel Pathway and Heart's Desire. Hey, that's not cool. Pass the turn. All of a sudden, my this draw is much worse. This is the adventure. This is the companion. Yep. I will attack for one with Javier. Attacking for one with Javier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can't block that one. Fast you. So I'm at 19. Yep. 
Uh, I will play a Swamp and a Jor-El. Jor-El, okay. And I will yeah, attack for one. Okay, I will go to 19. Pass the turn. Okay. Um... I <laughs> got a got a tough decision here. All right, time for six. Dun dun dun. Yeah, I'm a 13. All right, you go. <laughs> Admittedly, I only had two of these when my hand started. The third one uh, is pretty nice. That's about what I expected. <laughs> Love Shark Beast is terrifying, though. This, this deck's kind of bane to existence. I, yeah. Save what I was going to say for after you make a play. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Decisions, decisions, eh? Uh, I'm guessing you think about using the value of Jor-El versus playing Love Strike Beast would be my guess, but check for one. All right, 18. <laughs> I went from eight lands to two lands. Oh, of course. Oh, that's so much worse. <laughs> right. I'll go to 11 and draw two, make a cat. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I've got to uh, interact here. So I'll play Murkwater Pathway and Thirst to one of the champions. Okay. Champion Fortunately, that leaves me without blue mana, but got to do what you got to do. Yep. All right. Um... A faceless haven and I'll attack with these two, pump each other. Oh, has the removal spell, but yeah, I'll just force you to use it. Double block. Okay, I'll stomp. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And put this on an adventure and then post combat. I got a hall monitor. Pass to you. Show me your hall pass. You have two in hand? I have two. Yeah, I'll play Love Strike Beast. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. Hall monitor, can't block, attack for five. I'm at eight. <laughs> uh, I got you at six, right? Oh, yeah, I forgot the, yep. the two from the plot. Pass to you. I'm at six. Six to 18. Hall monitor showing up. <laughs> I need to see your hall pass. By Giganta? By Giganta. <laughs> awkward triumph is awkward. Yeah, yeah. You were just saying I, I added triumphs to this deck so I could cast my spells. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll play Sedgemore Witch. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. Um, take this. Okay. I will animate attacks, um, trigger target each other, each of other, and then yeah. camp block here before blocks. Yeah, so I am forced to just block the haven and go yep. to one. Yep. Pass to you. That is a tilt. Home monitor looking impressive. Love Shark Beast is always the big problem. Um, uh oh. 
think that lets us live. Okay. Don't like that. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to play Wither Bloom Apprentice. Okay. Joel Rail. Opt Trigger Apprentice. Okay. You go to 17, I go to 2, and I get a cat when I draw off the Opt. I will leave that on top. Okay. And I'll pass the turn. Yeah, that does keep you alive. Don't like that. Um... Do get to kind of put you in a rough spot here, though. Yeah, you get to target the beast, target yep. the cat, attack, yep. and force two chump blocks. Yep. So. And then I'll play this. Pass oh to you. Oh, God. And it's another <laughs> one drop. <laughs> a one drop that deals damage when it dies. Even better. It was a nice way to survive that turn, but you had to use a lot of resources to do it. And Hall Monitor just looking impressive. I was skeptic of it. I'm like, yeah, it's a new card. I don't know if it's going to be too insane, but definitely, definitely surprised me so far. Okay, uh, I can live again, but I'm still in this in this awkward uh, giveaway. Your yeah, your two -twos I just keep, keep having to chump block kind of thing. But I'm surprised you can live again. That's impressive. Huh? I'm surprised you can live again. I mean, all I need is two two creatures. Right. No, you need you need three because I can pump castle and attack for five. Mm. Um, all right, five attackers. One's gonna sneak through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need more than just two creatures. I uh, need the the right two creatures. Yeah, yeah. Which is Wither Bloom Apprentice. <laughs> yep. And Heart's Desire. Yep. That's a good one. You go to sixteen. I go to three. Yep. Uh, and I will get a Shaheen. Okay. And this is on an adventure. And then I'll pass the turn. Uh huh. Um, um, so you're at three. I could just do the can't block plan attack. You have to block. You do have to block both, but you can block one to here, trade with the cat, I could re-kill, or I can play the card I drew. It's just Ember Clayton. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> can play the card I, I drew, and it'll probably give me a little bit more longevity. Um, it does seem good. All right, I'll play Annex. I will make this not able to block. Attacks with these. Don't think I want to attack with the Hall Monitor. Um, yeah, just these. Or do I attack with the Hall Monitor? So that forces you to block these two. You can block these two here, and then you can block Hall Monitor here. Take one. Um, and then I get another token. Yeah, I'll attack with the Hall Monitor, too. Okay, and Love Trick Beast can't block. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm at three. Just take that. That would put me to one. And leave you still with what? Well, this is lethal. Mm. Ah. That would put me to one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> uh, you would not lose any creatures. I would just lose the Shaheen because this would get replaced. Obviously, uh, the Hall Monitor gets replaced by uh, Minotaur or Saber. Yep. I'm not sure. Uh, and then you would you would then have six creatures the following turn and a Hall Monitor. 
or five plus a hall monitor. Yep. All of which were lethal. I would start this turn with three blockers. And I would need to find a spell because otherwise the Fireblade Charger is lethal. Yep. Um, but I really want to leave the Witherbloom Apprentice on the battlefield. Seems like your only way to win the game, I agree. Yeah, so I, th I think I've just got to make this line. So okay. I will make those blocks. I will Village Rights the Shaheen. Uh, You're at four, I go to 15. Yep. I'll draw two. Uh, that's pretty neat. Damage. Um, yep, so I'll go to one. Take get a three. Slater. Got one to 15. Pass to you. Okay, play Fable Passage and sack it. Okay, I'm scared. Get an island. I will cast Of One Mind. <laughs> okay. Oh, Magecraft. That's pretty sweet. Two to 14. Yeah, Of One Mind is nice in this deck. So, yeah, that's two to 14. Um, and I guess I'll do it again. Okay. So 13 to three. Yep. <laughs> then I will Blood Chief's Thirsty. Do I want to do the other Hall Monitor or the Fervent Champ or Fervent Champion? Because the Fervent Champion is not being able to attack into the cats is pretty nice. So mm -hmm. you do have Castle Embreath. But it, uh, it'll, it would at least trade. Um, yeah, that, that's interesting. We, we're, the other play, it, it's just going to be Blood Chiefs or something, cast Lustre Beast. Okay. So I'm going to end at four, and you're going to end at 12. Yeah. Right? Um, oh, but that's going to kill me, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay, let's think about this again. Yeah, because of the castle. Do you have to kill Seder? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> um. So I could do that, or I could. Um, I've got an opt. I could try to opt into something. Um, you don't have blue mana. Oh yeah, I don't have more. So I can't do that. Yeah. So I just have to kill the satyr. Yep. So I'll go to four. You go to twelve. Okay. And I'll play Love Struck Beast, and I'll pass the turn. All right. Yeah, Annex was a pretty good draw. Yeah, it was. All right. Um. So, five attackers. If I'd been able to keep one of the token makers around. Yeah, it's been a crazy game. But I, I think I'd be taking over the game. It's been a crazy game. there was game. A, a better line I could have taken on those turns. All right, I just got to get that Wither Balloon Apprentice out of here. So I'm, I'm going to attack with everything. So I'm at four, so I have to block everything. Yep. Trigger these two. Um... Do I want to block the? Do I want to trade for the annex or just? Um, I guess I or chump it is the yeah. question then, because I could go like you know eat both fervent champions, uh, you know block hall monitor chump here. Mm -hmm. uh, then I would lose both two twos. You would lose these three. Just get three one ones back, mm -hmm. which is going to happen anyway. Yeah. The, I and the annex is going to turn into two one ones, which is probably even more threatening. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, with castle. I yeah. love that. Uh, not many people play castle because it messes with the snow. Sandy always plays two, and I love it. Yeah, so I think, the, yeah, this is the block I've got to and make. And I do just want a hall monitor to kill apprentice. Otherwise, the pump is not that great because I could just play bone crusher, but this is what gets you back into this game, I think. So I am going to pump. So you take yeah. two. I'm going to go to two. And uh, yeah, I'll get two, or I get three satyrs. Yep. And now I'm, I think I'm in a pretty rough spot. And bang, go. <laughs> One drops. Mono red, it keeps coming. Keeps coming. Oh, I, might, I actually might not have a, a target for this. Yes. Based on the way I've built the mana base. Okay, well, I didn't know anything about it, so let's just keep this around. Okay, okay. I only have one of each basic and like two or three Fable Passages. So. Okay. A little awkward there. But. Yeah, you got to put Fable Passage in your deck so you can draw them when they're awful. You know, otherwise you just wouldn't draw them. So, I mean, where's the fun in that? Yeah, I don't think there's really anything I can do here. Because yeah. all I, I have an opt and plumb the Forbidden, and then yeah. we're a little late on those. Like Sedgemore Witches. Like it, yeah, it's just not going to do anything against Castle yeah. plus the Chargers. Yep, just yep. too much, but... 
You were definitely hanging in for, you lived two more turns than I thought you were going to live. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that does it for the first two. You got to come back to defeat this wizard and win the last three. So we're going to head to the sideboard, see what kind of, I'm sure you have not great cards for me, which I'm not excited about, but we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with our third game here in our final match for the marbles. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to a versus live where we are sideboarding in our matchup between soul Side sacrifice and mono red. Does that look good on the camera there, Rob, just a wizard hat going over my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> on my side of things, bringing in some more interaction that is much yep. needed in this matchup. We've got some good removal. We have Wilts here, which take out not only Emberclave, but also Annex. Yeah. Uh, yep. So nice that you have two targets. Bringing out Toski is the worst card in the matchup. We're just not usually able to get really far ahead and press an advantage. We're playing defensive in the matchup. Yep. Uh, Plum the Forbidden, similarly, we have to trade a lot early, so we're not going to amass huge battlefields. And the life loss can just be a liability, yep. so trimming on Plum. And cutting one Joel Rail... Uh, you know, I, th I think it's a fine card, but it's not one that I can freely play on turn two. So it's not one I usually want to see super early. It's more of a three drop in this matchup yeah. where I'm casting it and then into casting, opt, yeah. you know, into opt or like village rights on a uh, human token from <laughs> um, uh, yeah. love struck beast, things yeah. like that. So, uh, yeah, not something I want to flood on, but uh, certainly still a fine card. So just trimming one. Cool. So on my end, I wanted to Torbin doesn't seem great. You have a lot of chump blockers. Um, I could be wrong on this, but trimming some of these because you do have good removal for it as well. And you can just chump away the tokens and still trade with them. So we're leaving one Torbin in. We're cutting one Embercleave down to three there. And then just one Fireblade Charger. Probably the worst one drop outside of that. Just for Scorching Dragonfires and Soul Sears for Lovestruck Beasts. Just want to be able to kill your two drops with a little bit more consistency. We already have eight. Now we just have 10 cards, you know, a good uh, a good sixth of our deck that can kill one of your very annoying two drops that run away with the game. So, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's do some battle in here. You got to win the next three. Otherwise, the wizard hat is, uh, you know, a good luck charm. I might just continue to wear it. I guess it's yours now, that, so I, I'd have to ask permission. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, and I think you'd say no. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're scared. It really ties the room together. It really, really, sure, it does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's battle. You're going to be on the play. Indeed, I will. Yeah, Mono Red just seems like a strong deck, too. Um, I think if I was going to play, I think I would still just play Soul Tie, personally. And I might play the Friday Saturday, Friday Satellite, but I can't play on Sunday, so it's, uh, you yeah. know, maybe I don't Rough really want to play. Yeah. Uh, not a great hand, but it's going to be a keeper. Yeah, I'll keep. Lead on Zagoth Triome. Okay. No one drop, but I got a mountain past you. Um, do which side do I want this pathway on? I'm gonna guess I want it on green because of Love Struck Beast potentially. Okay. Um, and I will play Witherbloom Apprentice. You get that out of there. Yep. Shock. Okay, I get a I get a chance at a new card. Conspiracy Theorist. Pass to you. It's a really cool one. <sighs> I will play Fable Passage and another Witherbloom Apprentice. Oh, yeah. That's this is going to be nice. Okay, so uh, let me make sure I'm understanding this right. So I'm going to attack for one and discard. Uh, I'm going to discard Bone Crusher Giant, draw a card, and then I will stomp this and put it on an adventure. So that works, right? There's, well, there's no reminder text from Adventure. I'm just wondering if Adventure says, like, you can cast. Does that does that work? Yeah, because it's like the same as Showdown, right? Mm, you can stomp off of Showdown? Yeah, yeah. You can do whatever you want off Showdown, so you just get to play the card. So I just get to choose the modes, is what I would assume. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Which is, that looked insane. <laughs> and take two, and I'll pass to you. I'm at 18. All right, this card's cool. <laughs> this card's cool. Okay, well, we get to do something. So I'll play Joel Rail. I'll play an Opt. Okay. Um, mm. yeah, I'm going to keep that on top. I think it's important enough to get a cat. Okay. Pass the turn. This deck is gas. 
Um, okay, I'm gonna attack. Um, discard Frostbite, draw a card. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I will pass priority. I can do this at any time, right? Yeah, until end of turn. Okay. Okay, damage. Yep. Then I will frostbite this, and I will play Conspiracy Theorist. Pass to you. It's considering killing the cat, but I, uh, you know, the cat's out of the bag at this point already, so I might as well just kill Joriel. Yeah, I'll play Luster Feast. Okay. Pass the turn. Okay. Um, the Cory's drawn two extra cards off the Theorist, but I drew a card effectively off the Joel Rail because the cat traded for one of the Theorists. So yep. he's up a card at this point. Pretty solid trade, yeah, I must agree. Um, now, if he doesn't have one of those Soul Seers, the Love Struck is going to play some good D. It is indeed going to do that, unfortunately, but I think this kind of just feels like a setup turn. Um, so I'm going to play a land. I'm going to play Annex and Hall Monitor and pass to you. Uh, ah, yes. The Ross. The Ross Grumble. This every game I've just either drawn too many lands or not enough. Yeah. Except the three lander this game just needed <laughs> land four. Yeah. I dream about you often, Ross. And uh, when I know they're nightmares, it's just you saying, that was a nice draw. And when it's a, when it's a very beautiful dream, it's just you going, Ugh. we got to stop hanging out. I got to get you out of my dreams, man. And into your car. And into my car. What song is that? <laughs> get out of my dreams and into my car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little Billy Ocean. Okay. Sure. Whatever. You got two in hand? Oh, I got two. They're actually unbelievable. I wouldn't lie to you on this one. All right, I might, but. Maybe I'll just play Mono Red. I will play a Heart's Desire. Okay. And I will pass the turn. Okay. Oh, draw. Um, I have a land. So many good plays. I don't know which one to pick. Um, All right, I am going to stall a little bit more, and then I'm going to declare attackers. Before you declare, I'll wilt the annex. Don't want Corey to be able to activate Hall Monitor and use Ember Cleave this turn, but definitely have to deal with the annex. You're gonna, fortunately going to get two satyrs instead of just the one. Yep. Um, then I will attack, trigger, discard Embercleave, drop. Yep. I would... So if I block, you're going to be able to just cleave and effectively trade Conspiracy Theorist for... I'll give you the spoiler alert. I am going to Embercleave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want that I, card going I, away. I will make the trade. All right, I'll put you to 17. And I'll pass to you. Okay, I'll play Zagoth Triome, another Love Struck Beast. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be blocking with the Shaheen. And I think trading for Hall Monitor is fine, so I will attack for one. Okay, 19. 19, 17, pass the turn. You're going to regret that. How so? Oh my god. Well, that was just the perfect draw anyways, but all right, I'll go Torben Frostbite that for five. <laughs> Bang for nine. 
<laughs> I'm at eight. Pass to you. <laughs> That's why you live in one, Torby. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Don't get that anywhere close to equipping. Yeah. Corridor four <laughs> rule, fell <Fels> hydro zero. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I have 14 of them. You have five. I have seven. All right, fair enough. Nine if you can't wilt. But then I drew one. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I guess I drew one to your four. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just needed things to stick around. I finally got to four mana where I could start making tokens with Sedgemore Witch, which yeah. is a good way of catching back up. And I have plum in hand, like one of the plums. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, my draw was just amazing. And Conspiracy Theorist was insane. Yeah. That card I mean, was and, insane. Well, I was if really I just have a removal spell for it, then. Yeah, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. But it's another kind of must answer. It reminds me a lot of Robber. Like, this is something yeah. you have to deal with. Um, but yeah, just getting that card advantage, as long as you have a bunch of cheap cards, it seems pretty sweet. Yeah. And now I, I guess I, I have Fable Passage into. Uh, I guess we'll get the forest. Yeah, because you can't even have one mind, right? Uh, no, because it's all human. Yeah. That's why I needed the love struck. But yeah, I can play yeah. Sedgemore Witch and pass the turn. Okay. Now we have some options. We have a robber. I have a land. I'll equip to. Yeah, Torby, why not? And I will... I'll attack with these. Then trigger. See if I get anything cool off the top of your deck. And then before blocks, I will make Shaheen unable to block. Um. Yeah, you're for, you're for sure dead. So this, this is, is ten. ten. <laughs> and that's at, enough. You're at eight. Oh, I'm at eight. Yeah, that's yeah. literally enough right there. Uh, yeah, I'm just done. Right. Well, it looks like we at least got time for a pity game, so you can we can hopefully see your deck do its thing. But I just pretty much had the stone called nuts there. I had frostbite, frostbite, bone crusher giants. Conspiracy theorists, three lands, and and one other card. You know, like yeah. to be fair, I have a lot of nut draws. You know, like the three fervent champion is pretty insane. But when I'm on the draw, all I want is frostbites and bone crushers. You know, and then and, and and maybe a soul seer uh, for love struck eventually. But yeah. all monitor has really mitigated that problem of. Uh, of Love Struck Beast. And the interaction with Frostbite and Torvin actually leads me to just want to take out one more one drop for another Torvin. That's pretty insane. That seems like something that just flips it on its end, you know? Yeah, having that answer to Love Struck Beast. For one mana. Like, that's insane. Yep, yep, yep. All right, Rob, you got any questions here while we wrap up the show? I do. Uh, yeah. Ross, chat would like to know where all your sleepers are. For all my what now? Sweepers. Sweeper. Oh, I think he said sure. sleepers. <laughs> I mean, I'm a deck that goes wide, so sweepers are not something that's going to play well yeah. in this strategy. Extinction event's not bad, right? You just odd. It's like what you're going to have to name most of the time. Yeah. I mean, if, if that ends up being, although that does exile my love struck piece. Yep. Yep. No, um, you have a pretty split battlefield when it comes yeah. to tokens. It's and, like and, witch and love struck are the only odds, I guess. Yeah. Everything else is even. Which is just Wither, Bloom, Apprentice, and Joel Rail. Yeah. So and I mean, very... you can play that. You can just play around that a little bit. Like, I, I wouldn't think you'd want, like, four or something, but maybe two of them would be fine. Yeah. But I think Gargaroth is the card for this one. Yeah, though, you know, getting to five mana is certainly, yeah. you know, no guarantee. This is a matchup that's going to need some work for these style of decks. Yeah. I wonder if you even want another. Maybe I just love Wolf Willowhaven too so much, but... It doesn't seem awful. Like, you don't want to play your bears on two most of the time anyways. Uh, I will keep the sand. Yeah, I'll keep. I'll play Fable Passage and pass. Okay. All right. Have a fervent champion. It's going to put me to 19. Yep. It'll pair nicely with my other two. Uh, uh, forest. Okay. Sometimes I do love just attacking with a good old mono red deck, you know? This would be a good week one deck, I think, while people are screwing around. Just cleave people. 
People are going to have unfocused decks because they're trying stuff. I will Heart's Desire and Blood Chief Thirst the Fervent Champion. Okay. And pass the turn. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I thought so. <laughs> they have a Hull Monitor. Pass. <laughs> Uh, let's play Tide Channel Pathway and Lobster Feast. Okay. And how do I get punished by attacking with Shaheen here? If you have a one drop with haste that you would have played last turn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I will attack with Shaheen. 19. Pass the turn. Always want to get those little points in when you were, you know, a Wither Bloom Apprentice deck. Zag for one. Okay. And if, that's, if, if, if that's how I'm going to. If that's how I'm gonna get punished. That's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. The one yeah. damage. You're gonna you're gonna totally lose at one life though. You know that, right? All right. This game I think is gonna be a little tougher for me. I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah. I'm back to hating mana right after this shot. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get Fable Passage. Okay. First swamp. How bad is it going to be? Not that bad. Okay. We've got a Wither Bloom Apprentice, Blood Chief Surf, the Hall Monitor, Drain you for one, attack for one. All right. So I go to 17, you go to 19. Yep. Pass the turn. Pretty strong draw there. I'll play an Annex and pass to you. Could have used that last turn. And I will play a Triome and buy Gigantha. Okay. Pass. Uh, I'll attack. I will take two. Bang. I will take ten. <laughs> Pass to you. Nine. <laughs> One way to mitigate uh, a mono red flood, just have Ember Cleave and Annex. I'm just going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I, I just had lands and Ember Cleave and I topped back the Annex. <laughs> Otherwise, I was just very dead. But that that shows the power of these two tricky cards. Uh, so this is a 10-point attack next turn. Yeah. Nine. I believe in the cleave. Someone in chat saying, you just got Eldrained. Yeah, you just got Eldrained. <laughs> we call that standard. <laughs> um. Yeah, you got the not very good here. You can't even... Team block. Guess I gotta go drill rail cycle. Okay. The cat. Yep. And pass the. Uh, so I'm worried about if you just have one more point of devotion, right? Because then that's yeah. 12, right? So I've got to put four in front of it. Torben. Uh, and I just can't beat that. Yeah. You, know, if you have one card in hand. <laughs> yeah, I think I just want to get in for three. And if I have to ch double chump with these, that's fine. Okay. Um. Yeah, I gotta take some risks here because I'm gonna win this game by you know very close margins with yeah. you bricking. So I'll get in for three, put you to fourteen, and yeah, pass. something like a heartless act for you is huge. That yeah, would like just stop a wilt. This. Yeah, so I can chump block. Like the, the Embercleave is the big thing. If you just had some creatures and I was setting up making tokens, yeah, I'll attack. Um, so I can double chump to play around like Frostbite. Mm -hmm. Uh, but no, I'll just block. Yep, I got a one. I did draw at least a creature. I'll pass to you. Four cards. They're all creatures. <laughs> yeah, God. So, yeah, one heartless act, and you really do get to temple me out pretty well. Uh, but yeah. Just uh, needed to draw spells. Yeah, I, I was flooding. Two blood, two I never found any sort of cantrip. Yeah, I was there, flooding. There's the, the third Joel Rail, third <laughs> Sedgemore Witch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean... This matchup was lopsided, and I do think yeah. it's bad, but I think it's it's looked worse than it normally is. You know, yeah, I've flooded. Agreed. I've been screwed. I've like my draws just haven't come together. Maybe Agreed. you know, 
that that's potentially a problem in deck construction, but mm -hmm. you can't conclude that after three games of one matchup, right? Yeah, and, and exactly that. One matchup where I have the worst case scenario for it, Bone Crusher, which you're going to have to deal with that a lot, but I have eight of them, you know, and that, that yeah. is the big problem for you uh, in this matchup. It just does seem like a bad matchup yeah, after, after playing it. The, yeah. You definitely need more of a sideboard for the matchup. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, that's clear. I think Gar like, I don't think Gargaroth by itself would fix things, but it would definitely, it's definitely a great high end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I imagine that deck like you keeping Jorel, but you like side out Witherbloom Apprentice for like Extinction Event Gargaros, you know, something along that line, and then just having Love Struck and just being a big creature, big creature deck, and hope that's enough. But Jorel's just still looked good when you could get it going. But the Apprentice, it kept you alive, that things. But all you were doing was just like delaying the inevitable. But there is, of course, the combo with Plum. That is going to be really nice, but it's just not that realistic that you're going to get that many tokens against them on a red deck. That's how I view it. But yeah, and that's yeah. why I, I trimmed on them. Uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to think of, like, what early defensive creatures I can play other than Lovestruck Beast. The problem is all the good creatures for the synergies are two toughness. Yeah, I'm trying to think, you too. Need, and you I... need some three toughness creatures, and the, all the black creatures are three bath, three twos, and, yeah. uh, you know, all the two drop. No no two drop has three toughness. Like, why would they ever do that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. It's a stomp world here. I'm trying yeah. to think, too. But, yeah, in that color combination, it just doesn't seem like too much. You just need, like, more Eliminates, more Heartless Axe, maybe. That's always been a decent um, way to beat this deck. And, you know, like, Shadow's Verdict is, like, the card that really is excellent against it, but it also hurts you. Um, so yeah, it's just a, that's a tough nut to crack. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'll yeah. finally have to have you chisel those marbles off. I know you glued them shut and they haven't been over here in so long. You know, I actually have to do some light dusting before I can even put them up, put them back over there. But yeah, a fun day. Um, but yeah, that's really going to do it for us. Um, we'll take all the questions you got. Have you got any good ones there, Rob, before we head out? Don't really have anything right now. Okay. Okay. Any big takeaways from standard? What would you play this weekend? Um, I mean, I've just been in love with these plum decks, but I, I really, if yeah. mono red's a hole, that's, that's an issue, but I don't, mono red is always a solvable issue. Yeah. Right. So I'm not but like, there's more plum decks, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure how good the, the, the blue splash is. It does make yeah. the mana considerably worse yeah. for not a huge gain. You know, I'm only playing of one mind. It's literally, it's of one mind and opt in the main, yeah. which are solid. You know, mm -hmm. opt is a great card to have in these decks, just cheap cantrips, but you could be playing cling to dust in your main. Yeah. You know, the sideboard is all Golgari cards. So I'm pretty interested in a Mardu plum deck where you get to uh um you know play bastions of remembrance showdown of the scalds plum you know clarion spirit uh you know that kind of stuff um brian gottlieb put put a list up that i played on stream it was marty it didn't have showdown but that that was one card that i added i just thought it was really cool in that kind of shell with a bunch of cheap stuff where your top end is showdown and then Bastion of Remembrance, you still get to, uh, you don't get the Witherbloom Apprentice shenanigans. I mean, the Bastion is sort of your Witherbloom Apprentice, yeah. right? You, you get know. Witch and Bastion as your three drops, and then you just have a ton of twos and ones. Yeah. Are you playing Claim the Firstborn in that deck? I think you, I think you play some, but probably sideboard some. Yeah, but you, you can don't play really like for Woe Strider is the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's Woe Strider, Witch, and uh, Bastion as your cards that you're you're fighting for. Uh, but you got to play some one drops for Clarion Spirit. You can play like the Witch that you sack and learn. You know, yeah, that kind I, of thing. Yeah, Twitch has been a card that people Twitch, played. Yeah. I would play Whisper yeah. Squad, but that's me. Yeah, no, I, I think Whisper Squad is is decent there, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, d definitely I would be playing something that start. It, my deck is going to start with four Plum the Forbidden, four yeah. Village Rights, four Sedgemore Witch. Yeah. And I don't know what the other 48 cards are, but those <laughs> are 12 of them. Yeah, and if I was playing, I would play Sultai Ultimatum, and I would play... Three Gargaros in the main. I'd play two Pelucranos in the main to be able to be decent against rogues and crush aggro decks. And then in the sideboard, I would sideboard like two clings, maybe, you know, like five total um, escape cards and like three or four disputes because I think rogues is going to be big. I'd want to compete with that and then just crush aggro and, uh, you know, good luck. And I, I would maybe even play the three mana two one that you either draw a card, put a 1-1, one, one, or you exile target cycling player's graveyard. As a cyborg card, maybe, just instead of El Elspeth's Nightmare. So Elspeth's Nightmare just hasn't been that good, um, where that witch can do some nice things, get you to the late game and stuff. So I think that would be my yeah. plan. Yeah.
makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for watching this standard edition. Go out and play these SCGs. We'll talk a little bit about that after Rob tells us all about our subs. All right. We had two today, Painless Quill 8 and Gundar for seven months. So thank you to both of our subs today and all of our other subs. Excellent. Awesome. And if you'd like to support Star City Games in another way, you can join SCG Premium $7.99 a month. We'll get you access to exclusive content from our wonderful staff of content creators as well as Corey Baumeister. <laughs> <laughs> it will also get you a few other perks. 5% off of sealed product, 10% off of singles, and 15% off of supplies. <laughs> so head on over to starcitygames.com slash join dash premium and sign up today. A joke doesn't even work. I don't write articles. But you Noob. make content. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. All right. And next up, if you're a, if you're a tired wizard from beating Ross Merriam all day like I am today, I want to make sure I'm sitting in a good comfy chair at the end of my day's work. So that the comfiest of chairs is definitely Carnock Gaming Chairs. If you want to pick up one of these, you can go to carnocks.com slash SCG, and you can use that affiliate link to get yourself 10% off one of these chairs. And our final sponsor is Coalesce Apparel. I doomed myself with the flood shirt. I you had did? problems. You, you did have a lot of mana problems. Should have known. Yep. I even thought about it when I put the shirt on. I, I put that shirt to the back of my closet at this yeah. point. It was you know? at the bottom of the pile, but I'm at the yeah. bottom of the pile. I need to do laundry. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, got, you got punished. Well, you can find their entire collection <laughs> of uh, T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers now at coalesceapparel.shop. And be sure to use the gift code SCG when checking out to get 10% off of your purchase there as well. And we got a lot of Strixhaven cards being opened, and we are just sending them out the door like no other here at Star City Games. So if you want to pick up some cards, you can order individual cards as well as sealed product. This limited format's amazing, by the way. I got my first glimpse of it this last weekend. It's super fun if you want to draft with your friends uh, or something like that. You can go to starcitygames.com slash previews to be able to get some sealed product or individual cards. And need a little bit of extra cash to pick up some sweet sealed product or new strict saving cards for decks and cubes and whatnot. Uh, you can always sell your cards to SCG. The process has never been easier because there are so many ways to do it. You can uh, call in and make an appointment to sell your cards in person. You can use the buy list feature on the website. You can mail your cards in and let SCG do the work for you. And if your collection is big enough, you can make an appointment to have SCG come to you. And as always, you do get a 30% bonus for store credit when you're trading in your cards to SCG. Absolutely. And we've been talking about it all show about the Star City Games uh, SCG Tour Online. These events are back this week after we took last weekend off. And Friday and Saturday will be four satellites each day all throughout the day so you can play really wherever you're at um four and two or better will get you into the sunday strict Haven championship qualifier five and one or six and i'll get you one or two buys respectfully and um you know it's going to be sweet these standard tournaments are going to be really awesome so if you want to learn um about those times you can go to starcitygames.com slash scg tour online and our final order of business is the StarCityGames.com weekly sale. This week, it is 15% off of all non-basic lands. So important to any collection because they're always played in all these tournaments. Mm. That uh, is going to exclude Strixhaven, but that's fine because none of the non-basics in Strixhaven are good anyway. Get those snarls off yeah. there, yeah. So get the non-basic <laughs> lands you're actually going to use. Get a good deal on them. That sale is going on now and will go on until Monday morning, this coming Monday at 10.59 a.m. Eastern time. So you still got several days to go check it out at StarCityGames.com slash sale. Get yourself some deals. That's a nice sale, I must say. I must say. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching this week. We will be back Tuesday. You know, we, we got some other ideas. We haven't really checked out on modern. We haven't done that in a while. We have that cooking. We might do some more historic. We're going to really think about it and get a, a really fun show to you on Tuesday. So that's going to be it for us. I'm going to treasure actually having the marbles. I haven't had them in what seems like a month again. You've been kind of cleaning my clock lately. So it's, it's the wizard It's a very hat. clean clock. It's a very you can clean read the clock. the time very easily. I, I can see it very clearly. Uh, I don't know. I'm a wizard now, so I can pretty much do anything. So yeah, you thanks. arrive exactly when you meet to. Time doesn't matter to you. Yeah, time's an illusion as well. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. We really appreciate everything here on the Twitch channel and our YouTube channel. So that's going to do it. We'll see you Tuesday. So for Rob, Ross Merriam, Corey Ballmeister, we'll see you then.